Right, but the chat's probably not hearing us at the moment. Let me go fix that. It's just because OBS <laughs> things happen. Okay, so hi, everybody. Now you can hear us. Okay, so sorry, everybody. Now, you, all of you, uh, uh, Carlo and Bellant, Bellant didn't notice that because you can hear me, but what happened was the output to OBS wasn't going through because OBS probably had an update of some sort. Chat, I kind of well, feel like we should just do like an impromptu, like three part harmony here and completely butcher it just for the sake of saying we did it. And that, <laughs> that'll be the perfect sound test for a, for an off the rails. Oh stream. my. Or we could just. You two, can, we you could. two can sing. I sound like a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you haven't heard Borkfest, but yeah, I have I heard, I've heard you Borkfest. Heard Davey Borking. Have, well, I want to know what part of that you think we can sing. That's hilarious. Yeah, that that that's. I love that comment. <laughs> I don't. Quite, I'm not that much different from a clown in my scene, <laughs> but it's, but we do appreciate you being here. Like this is really great. And V tries to chat. It's really great to see you in the chat too. And I want to say hello to, uh, for the first time, to Lara Gale thirteen. Welcome, 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 everybody. Very nice to see you all here. So let's go ahead and start this thing. It should be. This is going to be a really fun, fun time. Uh, v tries to chat. Says, "Please stop asking about the feet, especially with Davy." <laughs> uh oh. I have to, I'm gonna have to talk. I have to see what that's all about. But uh, it's nice to see you, everybody. Let's start this thing up. Let's start this thing up. All right. Yeah. This. I too have really been looking forward to this one for a while. And um, everyone, I'd like to say hello to all of you here in the um, in the Twitch first. My name is Davey. I am the host of this. This is the Sandwich Show, and it is a variety stream on Twitch. And once a week, we feature Q and A with with us with a, with a uh, collaborate with a with a content creator. This week, we're gonna hang out with two really cool people. First, let's introduce our guest. Our our guest. Our our, uh, our let's introduce our featured guest of the of the week, folks. Let's say hello to our good friend. Um, let's see, maybe push the right button. Science Streams, aka our friend Valent. Valent, welcome, to, welcome to the show. It's nice to meet you. How's it going tonight? Hey, Davey. How's it going? Hi, everybody. Welcome good. on in. Good, good, good. Oh, thank you so. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, also joining us tonight, co-hosting this one with me, our incredible friend and our continue and our continuing collaborator on this program, the incredible master of word art, the stream scribe, aka Carlo. What's going on, Carlo? How's it going tonight? <laughs> It's going. Oh, I got you. Well, that's, that's saying something in the world of OBS. And <laughs> if it's going, that's a thing. That is a thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it is really great to have you all here tonight. Again, this is uh, very late, fantastic. And thank you all for, for joining us, everybody. Mon, so nice to see you. Welcome in. Shout out to Mon Samurki and King. Shout out to you as well. It's nice to see you, everybody here joining us already right off the bat. Recording Goblin, nice to see you too. Hello there. Um, feel free to make comments as we go through the through the course of the show. We'll, we'll have... Uh, some very fan, fun conversation about microscopy, uh, streaming, art, and many other topics under the sun. And um, and then we'll segue to the second half of the show where we'll, add, we'll give you the opportunity to send in questions through our queue. So um, first, let's go say, let's introduce Bellant to the, to the Sandwich Sam fam. That's the name of our community. And so what you do, as we, as you, as we are familiar, is um, you, you show us the world of microscopic science. And it is quite a fun and really, in a lot of ways, underrated style of science because it's that which you cannot see naturally. And it's really interesting. I know that sounds like such an obvious statement, but but what drew you to the field of microscopy? Like, it sounds like a really fun, fun, fun lean of, of the science world. Like, what inspired it for you? Yeah, so the, oh, the pronunciation, it's Balint. Balint, right. Balint, yeah. The lit. The lit. Um, so it drew it's not so much that I'm in the field of microscopy it's that it's a tool in the fields that I study so in I studied as an undergrad immunity immune the immune response of a fruit fly and how does that work on the cellular level and so you want to see what the cells are doing you can only do it with a microscope or in graduate school how are the neurons connected in the insect brain and how does that correspond to behavior you got to use the, the microscope and same thing with ants and other insects. Like how do these fundamental properties of biology work? And 
sure, it's great to see the genetic side of it, to see what genes are turned on and off in different situations. But the big question is, right, what does it look like? It's that whole seeing is believing feel to it. And I just love being able to take pretty pictures and see what is actually happening on a very tiny level. It's really cool to see. Like, Describe the wonder of the first few times you were able to do that, whether you were in college or, or what have you. So very first time I was eight, mm -hmm. I was in my dad's lab because he's also a research scientist. He's a cancer geneticist at a medical school down in Georgia. And he was showing me cancer cells divide under the microscope. And that's the first time I saw cell division. I'd never seen it. You know, you hear about it as a kid, you see it in a textbook, but you never, you never actually get to see it happen. So that was the first time. And then the next big one was undergrad near the beginning of freshman year. I dissected a fruit fly larva that had been infected by a parasitic wasp. Whoa. So when you popped open the fly larva, uh -huh. you saw a wasp larva swimming inside its blood and eating the innards of it, like a scene from Aliens, like the face hugger just took you. And, I, and so you saw inside a living creature a second living creature swimming around. And so that was just like mind boggling. I mean, you, can, <laughs> you can mark its nuclei. You can see how many nuclei are in there. Um, you can see cellular structure, not just of the larva that you've popped open, but the, the wasp larva swimming around. It's, it was, it was heavy metal science. <laughs> that really is. I mean, honestly, I mean, Carlo, what would your reaction be to something like that? Like you're already seeing some really tiny, creature and you dissect it and you see another tiny creature like it's it's like a like a russian doll i guess you would say like it's kind of like that sort of yeah and because you're not if you zoom in then even closer you get to see that there's actually a third tiny world in there yeah. right if there's bacteria that are the animal the original animals eating that are beneficial to help its digestive system there's also an immune response that's being launched so you see tiny cells mounting their way towards the wasp larva trying to kill it so there's this oh. battlefield inside the animal that you don't see <laughs> right it's just it's cool that is cool holy mackerel oh my gosh that's phenomenal yeah i love it so much um i mean i i think it's really incredible to see that um and you know carlo i i did i did want to i did want to bring you into the conversation because it is because of you i that i found this the the, the world of, of science streams and I think that I probably would ask you the same kind of question. Like, what? How did you find this incredible world of microscopy and what Blint was doing um, on Twitch? I got to tell you, I've actually had this thought recurring for like the last several months about several places and, and people I found on Twitch. Uh, and I think the key word in that is several is that you meet so many people. I'm at a loss a little bit trying to recount how I became acquainted with some people. And some, some of them stand out, some of them don't. And I'm going to really kind of throw down hard on this one. But Belint is a lot like my wife in the sense that I don't remember meeting her. She's just always kind of been in the background of my life, it feels like, even though there was a time when she wasn't. So it's just like, I don't know. Like, I don't remember. Maybe he does. But it's one of those things where whether there was a, a moment that I remember and how we became acquainted, uh, I think that a, hand, a good handful of people on Twitch, it was instant fam. And I can't explain it. I, I, didn't, I didn't try to get it. Neither of us forced it. it. You just know your people when you meet them. And I don't, and uh, I'm not going to go and quote some cosmic thing, but I'm glad it's there. I don't, some things you don't have to question. Other things you got to deep dive under a microscope. There you go. <laughs> I like to use the microscope for that. I just want, I want to say See that. What I did there? That's pretty good. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's clever um but you know that's i do really... remember i do remember how we met. i knew he remembered yeah you have a mind i love this all of it so tell us i was on a raid train on accident one evening i believe it was a monday night actually carlo you were doing your monday evening stream we ended up in the stream of this gentleman called the stream scribe and he if you raided in at the time you would he would make you a piece of art like with your name on it and he just whipped out this beautiful name art in three minutes and it was the most mind-boggling thing i've ever seen so i was just hooked right away he had no You've idea who I was. 
Yeah, you, I was just saw, you just saw organisms devouring other under organisms under a microscope. But the, the mic drop for you was me writing some letters on a screen. You, <laughs> you gotta get out more, my friend. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Or, or maybe looked in further. I don't know. Or, or it just shows how talented you are. I think that's what it really shows. But so. Baby's having a good time. <laughs> I think that's we, a great compliment, honestly. And I, I would, yeah, definitely. I can subscribe it too. You know, I do, Carla, you do really do amazing things with the pen. Like, it, it is really rather impressive. Like, I do want to, I, I don't think that can ever be understated. Um, let's kind of jump on chat, too, really quickly. Um, first of all, Larva is a battlefield by Rahomo. A plus, A plus pun right there. That's really good. Um, um, Goblin, we really appreciate your comment. It's going to be an amazing stream. So far, so good. And um, let's see, what else we have here? Kings is 11 minutes in. We have our first mic drop. <laughs> um now i'm not sure what mon is saying not gonna lie i'm kind of glad you tore off the band oh uh, you're talking about streaming it is that what that was referring you're to talking about mon, mon's talking about me mon, mon was there at my beginning uh oh. so the short short version of that is uh oversight mod had a sit down drag out knock down uh conversation with me uh, i'm gonna say it was march or april of the pandemic uh year one and um uh, they told me I need to be on Twitch. I said, I don't know what Twitch is. They schooled me in about two days. They brought over a couple Uber uh, people who were infinitely more nerdy than I thought I was. And, I, and I'm glad they were there because they talked a language I didn't know how to speak, but I had to learn how to understand real fast when I heard it. So I sat in front of OBS and soaked that up and got a crash course. And in the middle of all that, that was so overwhelming because at the time, none of this was automated. You had to know the numbers. You had to you had to configure your bit rate. You had to know some things to even get on and not have it have all glitch on you. Uh, and um, nothing like a pandemic to speed that process up. I'm grateful for right. it. <laughs> but but um, Oversight knew that I didn't have, that they, they didn't know everything that an art streamer would need to know because uh, his forte was music streamers. So uh, he acquainted me with uh, with two art streamers, one of which was uh, Yanto Asher and the other one is Mon Sumatai. And um, Mond, uh, and Yanto uh, took me under their wing. They they pretty much schooled me on what I needed to know about the art world on Twitch, um, and said, "Let's do this." And I drove. I dragged my feet. I want to say three weeks at least before Mon pretty much you know said, "Okay, enough's enough. Get out there." And Yanto uh, had some long conversations with me. And at the end of that, said, "Please don't make us waste our time." <laughs> and so uh, we ripped the bandaid off, and the rest is history. But yeah, Mond. Uh, saying that uh, the kind of glad I tore off the bandage, you know, speaking of beginnings and Belen, I'm glad you remember that. I am, um, and, and I'm gonna underscore that with, I'm never ready for a raid. I'm still, I mentioned it today, <laughs> I'm never prepared. We know they're coming. We never, I'm never ready. He's got it down to where he's got it triggered on the stream deck. Oh, there's a raid, boom, we have a process. Welcome in, it's exciting me. I'm like, oh yeah, people are coming in. What am I doing now? <laughs> So, so I'm like, I'm like that guy that said, Hey, let's have a dinner party and all eight show up. And I'm like, wait, I didn't know it was at my house, you know, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> but talking about beginnings, uh, when mom said that just now about, uh, ripping off the bandaid and watching the growth, it's like, you, you, for, I don't forget, but you think about that for a second, that we were once completely Twitch ignorant. We were once completely unaware of, and here I'm going to do it again, Belen this microcosm in the world of how much infinitely minute everything about Twitch is compared to quote unquote real life. And yet this is more real life than anything that we do out in the real world. I have more ongoing daily connections here than I do in some of the closest relationships I have in my life separate from my, my wife. So it's like, how do you, how do you ever say, gee, thank you, Mon, for, for, you know, kicking me in the butt and saying, get, get going, you know, it just, and you, I don't, I, it's baffling, isn't it? Yeah, very it really much is. so. It's baffling. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but Lent, I mean, definitely, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that matter too. And how did you find Twitch? I'd always wondered about that too. I mean, you, you definitely have always been grounded in science for quite some time, but. Prepare yourself, Davey. This one's good. Oh, I'm, I, I'm looking, <laughs> I got my popcorn ready. Right they don't know I mean, it. <laughs> we had some friends who gamed on the <laughs> platform. Okay like during even graduate school it's like all right let's go ahead and go support you because she was doing something where if she raised x amount then she'd paint her body <laughs> purple and at the time i was like only isn't it only pro streamers gamers who are on twitch not like regular gamers but sure okay great we, wa we watched her stream awesome 
and then pandemic hits and we start you know i have some friends more friends for like oh you should come watch us and i start watching some gamers and all of a sudden we find this paleontologist by the name of paleontologizing and he's a science streamer who streams about paleontology and they ask you can ask questions about dinosaurs and he's an actual expert in field research everything and and he's doing outreach live which is something that i i am very passionate about doing outreach i think it's the responsibility of a scientist to do and so we start getting you know lead and i are chatting about like hey, we should maybe start doing something like this because and so for maybe at least nine months plus we didn't stream a thing we were even underneath our old moniker of b cacho which was my <laughs> first initial and last name I... yes i docked myself but we docked myself all the time on stream. We... <laughs> the reason being is because i feel like for a science streamer you have to be transparent with who you are That's that fair. you have credentials you can't be i can't be joe schmo spewing stuff about science right there is a responsibility that you have there are people on twitch who actually spew nonsense about science and it's very sad to see so you know we put the name front and center so we started with just live streaming ants from the lab just you get to just watch them leaf cutter ants go back and forth and what was cool was chat actually identified a new invasive species that was unknown to be in this particular species of ant so it was a, a leaf cutter ant called anacephalotes and there was a parasitic acromimex species ant that was living in this colony. And the only reason we noticed it was because on the stream, this giant ant walked out. It wasn't the queen of the leaf cutters. It was something different. And then it walked back in. It was maybe a 30 second clip and someone clipped it and was like, you guys should check this out. Wow. Like, holy, holy, holy crap. This is great. Now at the same time, my old boss was like, you know what? For my performance evaluation, she's like, Hey, doing a lot of outreach because I was also doing school visits, virtual school visits because of COVID and teaching people about science. She's like, yeah, this is what failed scientists do. You need to knock this off. I'm going to blackmail you. Um, and it was like, you know, threatening my recommendation letter being nerfed because I'm doing outreach. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it twice as hard. And um, that led to a whole bunch of stress that we don't need to get into. But it essentially it took a medical leave. Oh, man. And I was told to not come back. And because, you know, it's there's there's no place for someone like that in never lab. Yeah, that's true. Very much so. And, and, yeah, of course, because like heaven forbid. Right. And so I just went full force onto Twitch. I'm now at the Genetic Society of America, where they actually sent me to TwitchCon last year uh, <laughs> because they want us to start one for the GSA. It's the it's we are the, the an international organization that connect researchers run international conferences about basic science and they want us to have a twitch page too and they're like yeah let's do this let's spread science that's what our responsibility is as a scientist and so that's how that's how i got in here what an amazing story like thank you for sharing that with us i mean that's incredible stuff and and really great this must be so liberating to be freed of an organization that that just that frowns and outreach it just seems crazy to me i work in the public sector too i work in university so that just that just to hear of that is very disappointing, honestly. So I'm really glad you got, but you know, you you pick, you know, you uh, you found yourself in a better place, Belent. That's really cool, really cool. It's it's weird. It seems like it's not really institution specific. It's mm -hmm. like all the big professors that you'd want to postdoc or work for. There's just this mentality of we're better than other people, mm. and so explaining fun of like it's not our responsibility to explain our research to the public it's this weird that is feeling of what, what they want and what they don't want and i i it made me feel really skeevy and i'm glad just to not be in that like mindset and world anymore yeah 100 I, mean, uh, I think mond is right on that too it's reflected in a lot of places i see it across the board from the small to the top you see it in government you see it in religion you see it in restaurants you see it yeah. in sports i mean there's there's a there's an elitist mentality everywhere, and the funny part is most of the places and people that have it are usually not the people who are at the very top. Right. They're at the people one tier right underneath that that are the controlling minds, but not necessarily the figurehead. And it's like I see that all the time. You see managers being that way more than owners. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much for the bits. We just Look got that. Holy! Oh yeah. Can, uh, prepare yourself for I the can Krakenator. See, yeah, I can see that the community's brought the hype over here. Like, thank you so much, everybody. Holy cow! We got a hype train.
Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Let me go thank some people in the for the, first of all, uh, Pinball Sorcerer. Thank you so much for your kind comment. Um, I can't believe that how is Twitch able to contain this much amazing talent in one stream? For, you're very, very kind. Thank you, Pinball. And uh, ooh, hundred grand. No, 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 Rocking wait, no, 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 no. I appreciate the hype, but we, we, we no, not necessary, not necessary. <laughs> Yeah, Davey, the more you say that, the, 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 <laughs> there, there was a card in Magic the Gathering in like way back when, Giant Spider. I'm going to invoke the quote now in reference to high tech and you saying, oh, no, not necessary. So the Giant Spider of Dominion in Magic the Gathering <laughs> said, while it possesses potent venom, and by the way, we're doing science with this quote right now. While it possesses potent venom, the Giant Spider often chooses not to paralyze its victims because it enjoys the gentle rocking motion that the creature <laughs> uses to struggle to escape its web. Oh that is goodness. what it's like to be any streamer with a high tech. High going tech, on. oh my that. goodness. <laughs> high tech, I, high tech must really love automatones because like they're, they're, the, the 20K pretty... bit goal for automatone is like already down to like 5,000 bits now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the 3,700 bits? High tech, you did not have to do that. Thank you so much. And um, also, thank you, Science, for the 100 bits and Recording Goblin, Pinball Sorcerer for the resubs. I appreciate you so much, everybody. And Pinball Sorcerer for a resub for 18 months. Recording Goblin at a, a gift sub. Thank you so much for the gift sub, I should say. Uh, I raise you my remaining bits. No! <laughs> I mean, yes, but also no. <laughs> no! <laughs> Y'all are crazy. Thank you, Carlo. You're very kind. You know what we should do then? Um, let's keep this going. I was going to say we should do... <laughs> usually we do trivia at this time, but we're... I just... These stories are so good. I don't want to kind of... I don't want to break from that. Um, but, but, but Lentz, I mean, you talk about finding Twitch and finding a community and finding people and and seeing the evolutionary growth of the uh, of the channel and then you're finding people to collaborate with you basically in certain different ways like even like the other day i noticed that carlo was on your channel you know collabing with you offering um funny of offering uh, art and also funny quotes and, and things like that you have had the, the privilege of having um thug shells do a raid song basically for your channel like that's rather amazing now the, here's this is what one of my most exciting questions here because I'm like I did not foresee thug shells and science streams being a partnership but it's great I love it like how did you find each other in the in, shame in, on you for your prejudice Davey that's that's a reasonable company who just gave a twenty recording goblin what I've the never seen a twenty five look at that there goes the record. <laughs> <laughs> Davey, I mean, Tom. <laughs> I don't know what an automatone is. Oh my good, high tech. All right, I will. I will show you what an automatone is. So here, I would like to introduce you all to. This is my automatone. I gave it a name. This is its name is Ruben. This is an automatone. <laughs> So now, because of your generosity, you have unlocked an entire hour, at least, possibly more, of 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 our friend Ruben singing the hits um, on karaoke. So thank you so much for 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 all of that generosity. And the twenty five gift subs is wild. Have that's just okay. Recording that's Goblin. Just a Wednesday in the Kraken stream, Davy. Just get used to it. Yeah, you're right. Well, anyway, Belen, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry to interrupt with all that, but um, I did want. I oh, was that's okay. High tech's not sorry. There's no sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> well, I will fire up my Leoran board and I start shoot nerfing everyone here. <laughs> Appreciate it. I break balance all the time. Just absorb it's it. You're true. right. I, I, there's no there's no point in me, but thank you all so much. Honestly, 3,000 bits is wild. Resistance like, is futile, David. Yeah. 25 gift subs is wilder. This is... Level six is way above what we've ever done on the sandwich show. Holy mackerel. But, um, but yeah, I mean, what is, how, how's it been like getting to know people, other people from Twitch from different genres too, but like, that must be amazing to see, like to see, to be able to meet people. Like, as you mentioned, Thug Shells, who, who did music for your channel and things like that. I mean, 
Um, oh, she's also doing. The, she's done the theme song, which is debuting this Saturday. Nah. A whole theme song of the channel. Oh, that that is fantastic. I, well, I'm super excited for you, Belinda. I need to I need to exercise some some friendship privilege here and have you give have her return my call. I've been trying to get square one crossed with her for a few months. She's a little bit busy right now, but clearly he's got the red phone. I do lockdown. not. I'm still asking her for things. <laughs> But no, it's, it's, I think that's the best part of Twitch, right? And it's also one of the really important things for science content. Mm -hmm. It's if we're trying to make science more accessible, there's no reason just to be insular, Absolutely. right? Yeah. You want that. to make science as accessible as you can for everyone. And it's so, like, there's, you know, there's the mindset of only like pulling timbers of that community. And then really you're preaching to the choir, but you want to convince everyone that science is cool. And so we, I love the fact that we have artists, makers and crafters, food and drink streamers, mu music streamers, chatting streamers. Um, we've got some uh, folks who do fingernail art and everything else in between, right? And I think that's been, I mean, I learn every day just hanging out with other people, like and watching their streams. And it, I mean, we're even part of a stream team that is primarily makers and crafters and they let a they let a goofy scientist in. Like. <laughs> I tech, honestly, like that's. <laughs> like, listen, I, I really appreciate you. You're really, really kind. Like, honestly, 10 gift subs is unbelievable. Like, thank you so much. Dave, I wish Dave, I. Davey, I love you, sir. I'm just going to tell you right now that you talking when that happens, that may as well be the teacher from Peanuts going, wow. Well, 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 <laughs> <laughs> High tech is gonna keep doing high tech things, and you just gotta go and roll. That's just. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's it. So here's what I can do. <clears throat> I'm gonna do this first. Uh, I want to. Uh, for those of you who are new to this channel, I do want to introduce you to our staple of the program, and it is very much on brand for my name. So let's do the. This is called sandwich of the week, everyone, and let me show you what it is. And and Ricardo Goblin, thank you for the two thousand bits. Um, let me just get, uh, let me see if I can get, if, 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 see if I can get Balint's feed up here too. Maybe not. So let me just quickly show this for a second then. This is my sandwich of the week. This is a, this is a corned beef sandwich I made myself. I just took that packet and just like steamed the corned beef for like two or three hours. And there you go. And it's, I put some, uh, some, some, uh, I can't words at the moment because I'm just a but but I but I put some Thousand Island dressing in there just to create like kind of a Russian dressing and that's my sandwich of the week. So, um, Carla, do you have a sandwich of the week too, or are you, are you? It is fairly late where you are, so I, if not, it's, it's a little okay. bit late for me. But we uh, so I did a uh, I found these uh, low carb uh, street taco shells uh, and I found uh, some some already shaved off the off the spit. Um, gyro meat for the beef and beef and lamb combo and so i did that with some uh with some uh cranberry habanero cheese and a little bit of uh, uh a little bit of um bell peppers and that was uh that was a thing that sounds great uh, gyro Delivery. meat is phenomenal a phenomenal thing and uh and uh Belint, i if you mentioned that you uh, you were you were interested in sharing your favorite sandwich yeah i i haven't eaten yet tonight Davy, to be honest. Oh and my goodness. Lita, Lita has she was uh, helping her mom with something, so I was with the little one all day, so I haven't eaten yet. But if I were to have, all right, <laughs> because I'm Hungarian, you have to go with Hungarian salami. So you get like a nice Ooh. bread. Outside the crust is you know crunchy. Inside is soft. You put a little bit of butter on that. You slice Hungarian salami, Davy. It's sounds... available in New York. So actually. Carlos neck of the woods, he'd be able to get some. Oh. There's also some in Chicago. There's a company uh, that will import it. There is a European import store about about 20 minutes from me that I get baby bologna all the time, which is from Germany all the time. So that's good stuff. Yep. 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 So Car okay, we gotta we gotta chat, sir. We gotta yeah. do that. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, and then you slice hot Hungarian wax pepper, which you can get at the grocery <sighs> store, and put on top of it, so it gets a little kick to it. Mm. Ooh. That would be my vote for a sandwich. That's a great call. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Belen, thank you so much for offering that idea. Like, I can probably find a store like that in LA too, so I will hit that. Um, the Anchored Albatross, thank you so much for the follow. I, welcome to the Sam Fam. It's nice to meet you, every, my friend. Um, and Stuart's joined us too. Welcome in, Stuart Hayek. Welcome in. 
Give a shout out to uh, Stuart's daughter Jillian too, because Stuart's a a mod father over there. Um, and uh, let's catch up a little bit on other things in chat. My goodness, King says absorb, absorb. Restore rocks is uh, science is great. Somewhere that was a while ago, but <laughs> I still just um, and high tech says I'm an equal opportunity twitcher bork. <laughs> Some Bork love in the chat, folks. That's awesome. <laughs> Norna Silverstar, someone released a tech tech crack in I see. Absolutely. Thank you for the shout out, Romo. Um let's get back to it. So yeah, no, you're absolutely right as far as um, the way the way, many ways that people can collaborate on a stream like this. And I think that's really neat to see, Belent, like the way that you've divided the days to be themed for different things like you have a wacom wednesday which i think it would be good to for those who are not familiar with the channel like what would a wacom wednesday or wacom wednesday be like what what's the, what is what what are the features of that of that day compared to the other days well one feature is i don't know how to pronounce wacom or wacom um that seems to be pretty, pretty oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's throwing that one together <laughs> right. um we do so on, on Wednesdays and Sundays, we do some flavor of artwork. Okay. So I think art and science are two sides of the same coin. If you cannot illustrate well, you cannot illustrate a scientific finding clearly. And that puts you and your work at a disadvantage because the more people can understand your work and the work of others, the better it is for science, right? So you might be looking at these characters behind me. You're like, Blint, what on earth is this? So these are model organisms. These are... Uh, organisms that are studied in research labs for their genetics, behavior, neuroscience, and what have you, but in an easily digestible way. So we got a dancing fruit fly above my head, budding yeast, mouse, mosquito, ants, we keep going. Um, and so just making these art pieces of art in the way that's like, it has some kind of scientific merit and it will ask, people will ask them like, why is that ant dressed as Darth Vader? <laughs> Instead of saying gross. Right, you get past that first hurdle of not saying gross, you're all set. You can get in with people and actually start talking about the science behind things. And that, to me, is a big part of why we do that. Um, the other thing we do sometimes on Wednesdays, I love the 1994 cinematic masterpiece, Gargoyles. And I like to do, uh, I've been working on a character collage of doing every character of Gargoyles. And that's usually been falling on Wednesdays, but we've been working on the, the orchestra for the Thug Shells uh, music video debut on saturday <laughs> it's so this cool point, we've got Thank some goodness. absurd for characters that are playing random <laughs> <laughs> oh man y'all got to see that so let me just uh just queue up for those of you who are not and and i imagine most folks have already been in um in the uh, oh yeah so um yeah follow balance and science streams if you're not already because that is going to be one spectacular day and and it's going to be a great celebration so Definitely, we highly recommend. Um, I do want to thank Goblin also for the gift sub to the Anchored Albatross. Thank you so much for your, your generosity, everyone, tonight. Um, but Goblin, definitely a really nice of you to do so. Um, but yeah, now you're talking about art. So now you've got Carlo's attention. So yourself as an artist, it's very fine art, I must say. And um, you're st now, was there any particular study of art, or was that just something that came naturally to you, Belen? Oh, I was told to knock it off at a young age. <laughs> but Belinda, it's not going to help you get into medical school. You stop that. Mm -hmm. um, and so the only reason I art is because before, right before COVID, <clears throat> maybe that Christmas before COVID, Lita, I was like, Lita, what do you want for Christmas? Lita's my wife and she's the co-streamer as well. Um, and so what do you want for Christmas? Just make, just make something handmade. I'm like, honey, I'm, I'm a talentless hack. No, you're a very good artist. I've seen you. you never no, I'm terrible. They just just make me a card. Okay, okay, okay. I started making cards. I made her a card for Christmas and then one for her birthday, which is February first, and for Valentine's. She keeps these asking for these handmade things. I'm like, all right, you know what? For our anniversary, I'm gonna make something extra special. And so I was like, I'm gonna draw us as ants. Because I'm in <laughs> ant research lab and we are nerds and it's fine. And so the original Antonia was one of four sketches. Two of those sketches became creatures on that uh, anniversary card that June. The last one of them then became Antonia, who then I started learning how to 3D model. And, you know, I was getting into the, like, on ZBrush and Blender, modeling a character. Because I was like, at first, I was just like, oh, I wanted this would be neat to learn. 
And then it was like, oh, I should make the entire colony of like what their behaviors are. And I was like, wait a minute, I can teach people about these critters. And then it like progressed, you know, it was that was like maybe a year before we got on Twitch. And then it was all of a sudden, you know, you heard about emotes. And I'm like, that's a totally, I, for our first emote was a 3D Antonia shrunken down. It was garbage. <laughs> oh, wow. I, had, I had no idea how to do 2D art. Mm -hmm. And so then I started drawing and learning the Clip Studio. And then here we are today, making animations and other zany things. That's really cool. Yeah, that that's another good point that it's not just the static art, but it's also the animated art, animated art, which is really cool. So, so that's the reason why it's cyan streams because of the sketch way back when, or however back when it was. So cyan because we worked on ants and their genetics, mm -hmm. and we at that time I knew I was going to be a father, I suppose, and so the mm -hmm. dad puns just come left and right. Um, so that's why, in part, we were ant, I'm ant geneticist, and then. Our mascot was in Antonio, so the two things kind of fit together. Yeah, that's and it's it it's pretty. Yeah, and it's a very very. It's it's a very identifiable character. Like I I do I think Antonio has done very well in representing the brand. Like it's, you know I it's it's like an, yeah. And so Carlo, if you what would, what would your takeaway be from the usage of these uh, of this of of these of these of these characters in in expressing science? It just seems really cool to me anyway. I'm gonna say it right now. If I'm the Bob Ross of Twitch, Balin's the Mr. Wizard. I mean, he's gonna take, he's gonna take something that's seemingly unrelated, and tie it into something that you didn't even know you were interested in, and now you're interested in it. You don't even know how you got there. You just you're you're tuning in. And uh, one of the things I I'll say this too is that a lot of times I'll be lurking in, in Balin's stream, and things that I would not have purposely tuned in for. Uh, and that's not to say that it was uninteresting. It's just not something that was on my radar that day because, you know, squirrels. But all of a sudden, just like anything else that you suddenly take an interest in in your life from the moment you're when you're when you're young and you're, you're, you're in kindergarten right on up to being an adult, you overhear something that piques your interest. And then it, 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 you, you can't stop thinking about it. You go looking for I don't know about you, but I deep my my the extent of my deep diving is usually Wikipedia. Not anymore. I got, I'm going to science websites that I would who who before watching Balint stream that had nothing to do with science outside of Twitch has not already started doing this at least once since being in Balint stream where you actually find yourself going to places on the internet you didn't know existed, didn't care existed because now you got to have more information on this and he's already offline. Damn him! Like it's like literally I have to know now, and that's kind of where I think that that connection is is that you don't get people to leave the echo chamber unless you change the category, you know? And, and yeah. so if, in, in, a, in what Blin said about the, the labs, I mean, that's an echo chamber. That's people who have, who have a mindset talking to people who already have the same mindset to convince them that their mindset is worth what it's worth. The only way you break that hive mentality is to bring people who are not of that mindset in and to bring those people out. It just doesn't happen any other way. Uh, I didn't know that that's what I was doing when I started collabing with music streamers, um, but that's what it was. I didn't figure it out until later on, until somebody said that, hey, did you know that more of the people that are in your community are people who are in the music streamers? I'm like, yeah, I don't have many people in our communities in my stream, at least at the time. And so, Belint, how many people in, in your in your community are other scientists? Some, but they're the minority at best. 20. Right? So, right. So, so, so our communities are made up of people who are not an echo chamber. They're people who are not predisposed to liking or loving or knowing about or caring about any of the things that we do on stream. And yet I promise you when Belint signs off at the end of the night and I quit around four, four 30, there are people going to other science streams. There are people going to other art streams just because we crossed the streams. See what I did there? <laughs> so it's like, you know, and, and that's the thing. You you don't you don't get anywhere unless you're bridging those gaps. So build some bridges. And he has. And the, and and he didn't I went to music streamers. Blin didn't stop there. He's going to he's going to art streams, music streams, variety streams, chat streams. And he's not it's not like he's endeavoring to do this. He's not looking to glad hand other streamers to bring people in, but just on virtue of the fact that even by himself, he's embracing these things only in his stream also. So, I mean, he's doing art on a science stream. He's doing the art. It's not like he has just a guest on his stream that's an artist. And so, so I mean, there's that right there kind of lends a lot of credulity, I think, to 
well, I mean, the scientific approach, if you will. I mean, how much about 3D printing and, and, and drawing Antonia did you really know about when you were in the lab versus now when you're just going to just question. crack it open? You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's an obvious thing. And at the same time, it's only obvious because he's out there doing it and it's happening. That's a hell of a question. Um, let's follow up on that. But first, let me just say thank you so much to Igneous Orange for the five gift subs and recording Goblin as well for another gift sub to Nona Silver Star. Y'all are really kind. Thank you so much. Nona Silver Star also says, who are you going to call? Twitch collabors. Yeah. She caught that. Nice. <laughs> nice I caught that, too. <laughs> I, knew, I knew I could trust you to get that one, that reference. Love that. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you'd like to field that question, Bill, we'd love to hear your, your thoughts on that. On just... Which what was the question? They, Car <laughs> Carlo took took away took it away and answered. Yeah, that that never happens. I don't I, know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was about trying to remember. It was um, we were getting into taking the to oh the discovery of other plant of other genres, and I think that is that is like a really cool facet of uh, really not even like both of your all streams is that you do have us all or the audience really intrigued in in other topics you otherwise might not you might invest in and you know um i mean, i guess maybe this is a good way to kind of flip the question um but let, like are there other streamers who do that in addition to car like are there other streamers who might do that for you like get you more interested in a field that you might not otherwise be involved in i i think most of the streamers right like with even like gaming mm -hmm. like i play video games but i don't I, I, there, I've learned about video games. I was like, this seems really cool. And then I got it and played it. Not on stream, but just for fun, right? And then I have never listened to hip hop and break beats left, right, and center like Thuggy does. And yet I'm there now. Or the makers and crafters, the 3D printers, the leather workers, the painters, the digital artists. Like I, I'm in these communities now and I'm like just learning every day. And it's that's why I'm there. They're also really great people. Um, so I... Like as Carlos says, I think neither of us go into streams with the idea of we want to cross the paths. We're looking for really just good people, and we're lucky in that we find them. I can speak on that on that yep. subject too. I'm been yep. I feel very blessed to have found so much of that on this at least on this side of Twitch. I know that Twitch is not entirely. Like uh, this kind of, and mostly gaming and everything else, but but wherever I've been, at least I've, I've it's definitely been a really great positive experience. And um, recording Goblin, thank you so much for the, the promo too. Um, I really appreciate you um, pumping up the sandwich show streams as well. We're glad to entertain and also promote other people on this platform. And just really why I love doing this show because I always feel like I, I when I find really cool th people that on just like you were saying, Belen, when I find really cool people to promote. I want other people to know about it, and that's the biggest reason I do this 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 show every week. Like I, I really love to do this is this is what gives me energy in life, and so it's cool you all can do the same thing. I I really love that, um, and I also get them to do more art. I could do more art. I could do more art. I I've done. Does do Legos count as art? Yeah, yeah. I think Legos count. I would as say art. your sandwich also counts as art. That looked beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, I would take that. I'll take that. Absolutely. Yeah. I take pride in, I, uh, in crafting. Sandwich. Well, I, I cannot wait to see, but Blunt, I cannot wait to see that Hungarian uh, salami sandwich. That just, <laughs> oh, if you ever make one on stream, please notify all of us. We'll, we'll go, we'll <laughs> head over there and take a look. That's I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to rest until I see Lita and Blunt doing a cooking stream. That's just <laughs> now. And, and I don't, I don't care if you're just, Prepping the formula. I I, I'm gonna, I want to see you two in the kitchen, not just at the bench. You know what I'm saying? You got it. <laughs> I love it. it. Another thing, too, Davey, you, you mentioned that was, um, so, you know, what is an art? And one of the things that I, I remember quarreling with when I was in high school, uh, when I first went into a studio art class, which you're, I have some jaded viewpoints there. I'll spare them for now. But the long, long story short, uh, you know, how do you define, you know, what is an art? And that was something that they tried doing in high school back when. And... I don't know what they said. I don't even really care what they said. But in reference to Belint, like, um, what is science? I mean, science is knowledge. It's not just facts, because facts is different from knowledge. Facts is part of the body that is knowledge, and knowledge changes. Facts usually don't. Uh, and then the reason why knowledge changes is because some facts become non-facts because of time. 
and some things that weren't true yesterday become true today because of adaptability and things to that effect. So if that's the case for science, then the same applies to art. Uh, art is nothing more than applied science that doesn't currently have a fact set. So for instance, if you know a technique to do something and now, it be, now you teach it and now it becomes a standard, you know, it's an art form, sure, but now when you're gonna take what's now the standard and adapt it further, now you're in the art territory where now you're taking something that already exists and creating something that doesn't yet exist with means that are not currently taught. So it's th between facts and knowledge, there is art. And that's, that's where I think the blending of communities is just, that, that should be the default. That should be the autopilot. Blending communities should be the automatic thing. But for whatever reason, that becomes the special thing. And I think if Bolin ever accomplishes what he wants to, it'll be that. It'll be tipping it the other way, where now the, the celebration of what he does and what he loves and what he knows is going to be this melting pot of everything that he loves and he knows. It's not just the scientific aspect, but bringing a scientific aspect to so many things. Uh, and, and I think you, you've already achieved that. I mean, you've had... You've had I actually meant to call it out at the beginning of the stream. He's got that nice purple check mark, and I'm sitting here with my bear mug. And you know what? <laughs> Just as happy as you, my friend, but I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. You've accomplished a lot, sir. Absolutely. In a, in a, in a relatively small time frame. Absolutely. I mean, seriously, show me another person who had a mission to do what you've done who actually did it in the time frame you did it. Hats off to them. I don't know any. I know you. Uh, and and you're, you're, you're living it. I think it's just fabulous. I think it's just so fabulous. Appreciate you, Carla. It's it's a blast. It's a blast, and I, I'm still I'm I still can't believe it. <laughs> I hear you on that, and but we're so happy for you to see that because you are just you're nothing but great to all of us. Whenever we're the, whenever we're at science streams, like it's really amazing stuff. Um, and let me just catch up on chat, um, and we'll keep going. First, to Mond, Mond says, "All right, you three, I will have to vanish." Davey, have a wonderful stream, Carlo. We will get together tomorrow. Science. I'll see you next stream for more science. Mond, thank you so much. <laughs> Shout out to Monster Murky. Go give our friend Mond a follow, too. Thank you, Mond. Thank Mond you. has been on Twitch a long time. Yes. A long time. You talk about mm -hmm. uh, people who have seen and, and, and a lot of changes and a lot of evolution in, in this platform. Mond has had – Mond is a history book of that. And um, I remember some of the things that both uh, Mond and Yanto both told me that were true three years ago that are either no longer true and things that were not true three years ago that are true now. And the fact that – Again, that, that change into this platform, at one time it was just for gaming. And even then it wasn't even a community, it was just a platform for gaming. And then the community came into it. And then it became another community of a different type. And so now, even though there are huge streams that are not within the realm of what we are, um, to say that we are an insignificant part of Twitch would be a, a, a real shame and, and a lie because there's so many subcultures if you will of people who make up a very large portion of people following on twitch and i think that if there's gaming on twitch yeah and i do mugs too that's a private joke if kurt becker's watching so so one long story short though is that you know because this was prime i mean you ask people who've never been on twitch they're gonna say oh isn't it a gaming platform so it's known for that primarily mm -hmm. even now yep but you tell that to the 20 and thirty thousand followers in some of the bigger music streams you tell that to the people who have 30 and 50,000 followers and just chatting streams. Who knew that podcasting would become just as rich on Twitch as it was on Apple, as it was yeah. on Spotify, you know? And so there's a thing. That, <laughs> it's, it's a thing. It's interesting you mentioned that, Carlo. Um, but let me also mention, think Peppercorn was really, really nice to say. Um, uh, thank you so much, Peppercorn, for your kind words. I, I'm trying to scroll back to see where it was. But, um, but as far as podcasting, Oh, and Scissorman51, welcome in as well. It's nice to see you. Hide your socks, Davies here. <laughs> you bet. You betcha. But um, nice to see you. I think Peppercorn said, oh, yeah, look, it's very nice of you to think of me as a cute, cool human. I, I'm just trying to share the love that everyone else gives back to me. So thank you so much, Peppercorn. You're really nice to say. Really nice of you to say that. I I mean, I, I care about all of you so much. I really do. And uh, um, so podcasting as a thing on Twitch I feel like this is a relatively new journey because when I joined Twitch in about two years ago, it was 18 months ago, I think at this point, um, I was a little, no, no, it was like maybe 22 months, I guess at this point, but 
I was a little surprised at how little of a scene there was. Like, there was really only, like, maybe one other show that was, like, doing this kind of show where you're basically getting other people from Twitch to go on to do an interview. And I was, like, surprised. I'm like, this is it. This is all we have. And then like, maybe this one other, like, fringe or fringe show. So there's been, like, two or three shows that I could have think thought of. Like, I had to really go look for them. What we have today is so much greater. Like, it's it's really cool. Like, we have... I mean, I can pump up the show we do here. We have Island Vibe Presents. We have Kev from the Bunker's show. Kev has a pop from the Bunker. Really good show on yep. uh, on the Twitch. on Twitch, And um, and then there's just a bunch of others. Like, it's... I think there was this one I discovered, like, this week, too, which is, which is kind of interesting. I want to give that a look, too. I forgot the name, but... It is... I think it's great that that void has been filled, left, filled because it needed to be there. Like, I was surprised that no one was there to actually tell you who else was on the platform. Like, that bothered me. And so it's, I'm really grateful to have, I mean, to have been part of that resurgence. And it's great to see it really thriving now. So I appreciate that comment. Yeah. Um, but to, but to Belen, like, that's kind of the same scenario with science. Like, I feel like, did you feel at the time that you started science streams that there was a void in the way that science was being promoted and and, and uh, shared with, uh, with the people out there on the internet? Like, did you feel like there needed to be a different way of doing it or there just wasn't enough of it out there? Both. Oh, okay. So there's, ours is very, there's a couple of big science streamers. Ours is very different. Gotcha. Uh, ours is much more loosey-goosey. Mm-hmm. But I think the loosey goosiness pulls you in, right? Like, right, it, right. I can't just sit here and tell you facts because you're gonna leave. Because that either you're gonna YouTube it, right? Because other why would I spew facts at you? You can just go on YouTube it or a podcast, like a download, and just hear me talk at you, mm -hmm. right? Or you know, you have like a really good hook. Like uh, the really cool thing with Danny is he had dinosaurs. Everyone loves dinosaurs. That's true. But yeah. Not so much. Or general biology is harder to market. Right. So we went, we tried to go for like a very fun, wholesome vibe where we can derail left, right, and center. But at the end of the day, you still <laughs> learn something. Now, I would argue at, at the time, but even today, there's still very few science content creators and there's very little overlap in the ones that are doing really well. Like we just had our friend Astro Canuck. Uh, astrophotographer tells you about the stars just made partner that's the first astrophotographer that i'm aware of that has made it right we have one geologist we have a paleontologist and a chemist and then us wow pretty sure that's a wow uh, oh my goodness so there's you know there's smaller folks mm -hmm. who do as well but it's it's getting to where what what's the how do you cross that threshold? There's a lot of great streamers out there who are very, who are doing science content, but it's very insular. Like we were talking about earlier, where it's kind of hard to break through that wall. And part of it is just time. How much time can you commit to vet through people and identify people you want to share a community with? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other half too is, you know, sometimes, I mean, there's people labeled as science content creators on here who I can tell you spread misinformation. And so it's just, you know, we are like, all right, let's, let's do something about this. That, that I'm I'm really appreciate that that uh, commitment to trying to set the record straight from yeah you because know, I you, you hate to see that you really do and I I'm sure I I do believe that tracks unfortunately so it's it's I, I think it's cool that you're that you're 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 holding that responsibility to you know to to not you know to show people the what you know the truth and and that that's that's important too Mod says it is intimidating to the idea to the idea of science and discovery. People don't entirely enjoy the discovery of small things or microbio and have fun doing it. It's insane that there's not enough of it. And it's just kind of one of those things. It's like, and thank you for the comment, Mon, but would you, how would you, um, what's your takeaway on that, on that specific idea? Like the, 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 the fear, I guess, in a way of, of microscopy, is that what, is how you would interpret that? I think it's, it's how you package it. I see. Right. I, I think how you present the microscopic world it can't just be i'm just putting a dish underneath right you have to have a guide mm -hmm. if i'm looking at a for example i don't know anything about geodes or ge ge you know geology but if i have a guide who's shown me under a microscope how the rock formations and the crystalline structures look like i'm, I'm going to be more hooked in 
And so I think that's part of it too. It's not sufficient enough just to put something under a scope. You have to have some guiding force to it in addition to make it entertaining as well. Because at the end of the day, right, I think Carlos says this, is that we're we're running our own public access TV show at the end of the right. day. We're the main crew of the lighting, the, the cameras, the, the feed, the interact, all that. So you have to make it packaged into something that's fun. But at the same time, you know, you're you're learning something. Yeah. And microscopes also are not inexpensive. Like that we have we're lucky oh. that we have two that was funded by the community. They're two very different ones, a mm-hmm. light microscope and a dissecting scope for different kinds of samples, but there's huge room for improvement on these. Like the the res that we can get is not great. Right. Right. So you know, new cameras, new um there's a uh, laser attachments that we can get to make stuff glow to see what it looks like with like you know we could do advanced staining and you know the baby steps that's eventually when we get to make things like that more accessible and we always as uh recording Gollum points out that um we live off questions if at any point anyone ever has any kind of question i will stop everything and answer it the best i can i can attest to that and if i can't yeah, then i will tell I you that. that i cannot which nothing drives me crazier than when a scientist will answer a question that they have no expertise on. And so I'm like, nope, I don't know, but I will look it up for you. That's so, awesome. Because I, I know it's tempting for folks out there to, like, just try to answer. I mean, it, that's that humility to be able to do that, I think, is in, is enormous. And, you know, honesty of that caliber is, is definitely going to get, get, you know, I think it's definitely worthwhile. So that's, I mean... And the nice thing is, like you said, there there are resources that can point you in the right direction if you didn't. Have, I mean, I, I work with that. I kind of have a little of that with technology, too, where it's like, you know, honestly, I'm not going to know. I don't want to act like I know something I don't know, because that just makes it, from my point of view, it feels like it just makes it worse. So I love that comment, too. Um, Monsters is here, here for another hour. Nice. Pump it up. Um, telescopic lenses are so fun. And and at Goblin's point is really great. I I was gonna I was gonna ask about that too, um, Belen. Like I think it's really interesting to see the engagement with the chat, and I'm glad to see that you're feeding off of it. Um, and I think do you as I think you made, the question essentially was answered because I was gonna say like what what do you what what are your methods for making the chat keeping the cat engaged because it's a big reason why I think your show is a success. Like it's really amazing to see. And Imad even says that you are you could now be considered an influencer for that very reason. I completely agree. Like I think it's really because it, for us anyway, like from the point of view of uh, of the viewer, it does feel like we're part of it. And I think the the quick response you have to anybody in chat goes a long way. And um, and I guess my question is, what do you do to keep the engagement going? You know, to make sure that those lulls don't happen too frequently. Uh, so Dave, you didn't see me at the beginning. Oh, it was wow. very cringy when you're talking to, you know, <laughs> really? three or four people. Okay. And you're trying to fill that empty, but the, the no chat. And so you just got to learn to like your voice. And I hate my voice. I hate the recording of my voice. I can't stand it. I can't look at VODs of myself. It's terrible. Um, but just getting that in you that just to keep talking, keep talking about things, offshoots, left, right, and center, someone's going to find something interesting. Maybe. Or it will at least spark a question. Um, you know, with the microscope on Mondays when we look at Amber with Carlo, it's something that I've never looked at before. Mm-hmm. I always try to make sure I go in blind. And then we're discovering together. Or, um, you know, having a lot of redeems that people can trigger just to reset the fun. If I'm getting a little bit too, like, in the weeds, all right, shoot me in the face with a nerve gun. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit and then we're good to go again. Gotcha. Well, you know, it's... And I love the chat calling back to your early days. Recording Goblin says, miss the white lab coat days. Now that, <laughs> I missed out on that one. <laughs> no, I mean, I first started, I even wore a collared shirt so really? I could have some credibility. <laughs> then uh, that, you can see that, that got lost pretty fast. And now you got more credibility wearing a Twitch logo t-shirt than you ever did in a lab coat, my friend. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. It, that was the that first stream I, I gave a PowerPoint. Because I was like, how can I do this? And so Lita was watching from upstairs and she's like, all right, honey, we're not going to do this again. (laughs) Because it was at that point, it was science with Valent. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, we want this, you want this to be successful. Yeah. Yes, honey, we're going to be a team. We're going to make this work. Because Lita has experience. She has taught in high schools when she was an undergrad, inner city uh, students teaching them like after school science club. 
like that was the barrier between them going out to like the streets where there was gang violence happening like there were um metal detectors at the school like this is the kind of inner city that we're talking about oh, wow. in, uh, in arizona and so she like is very good at interacting with folks on about science and so we revamped and uh i think that made it you know loosened up was a big thing Blint was not as loosey-goosey as he is now back then gotcha we're well, better we're better for it well i and i think that just segues to another great question um high tech first says balance voice is a calming radio dj voice now my voice is cringe i mean high tech speaking of of, of uh, high tech self um Nona says the key to starting in. But, oh, Mods, can we give a shout out to the anchored albatross who is, as um, albatross said, one of few people who do calligraphy. Apparently, I didn't realize it was that small a community. Well, we should definitely let you know that people know about you. I'll give you a follow too. But uh, yeah, then thank you so much. Let me make sure that. But um, she did that, baby. She did that. About that that wood carving on my wall. That wood see? carving. Wood that the pyrography that logo that's that's wood and that's burned wood she did live on her stream and she really? three weeks live on stream we showed it on my vod today too she, that's, she's she's spectacular that's awesome uh anchor at albatross i love that i i didn't so we got a little you got a little stream strike blower right there that's pretty cool um so yeah you all go follow the anchor at albatross thank you. honestly that's that's awesome so um but yeah I, I think that's really great i think it's now I think we've come to the... Um, Carla, do you have any other questions for Belent before we segue to random questions from chat? I mean, I'm, I I don't know if I have any questions. I think if I don't know you by now, you're never gonna, I'm never, never going to know you, sir. <laughs> but uh, a couple of things, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll actually throw it back to both of you on. Is okay. I kind of feel like the, the common denominator for what Belent's mission's been with his channel and what he's accomplished and what... I didn't even know I was actually on a mission to do until about a year and a half in, and then it kind of became the crusade. But uh, a couple of people in chat had mentioned how there's like no lettering uh, people to speak of on Twitch. There's a category for it. There are people doing it, but there's nobody that's doing it with any regularity. There's nobody that's doing it with any real engagement. If they do it, they're just kind of like doing it as like, like they're doing homework on, on camera. And that's, and I didn't realize that when I started Twitch. I just I saw, oh, there's a category for it. So there's people on here. No, there's not many people on here. And there's a lot of people who love it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anybody in my stream. But for the same reason that people go to science, I kind of want to bridge the gap on what, what uh, Recording Goblin was saying about how you do not have to have a preconceived notion uh, about science in general or know anything about whatever Balloon is going to deep dive in on a Monday when I'm there or any day for that matter to enjoy and have many, many takeaways from spending your time there. The same applies to most channels, yours included. I mean, so Davey, when you're, when you're interviewing someone, mm -hmm. most people don't yet know them, right? right. There, there may be a handful that come in have, are already following and they're just here to see that stream, but the people who are just here from your stream, they're, they're meeting this person for the first time. And so with no preconceived notions, with, with not knowing anything about them, how much are they going there after they're done watching your stream? They're going there. They're, that, is, that is now their new, a new part of their community. So it's just like anything else, outreach, and I think Blint said it best, packaging. Uh, I hate that the book and the cover thing applies so much to how things are spun. Uh, I'm sure Blint probably wishes he could just talk plainly about the things he knows and not have to spend the energy packaging it to make it palatable to people who don't want to put it in their mouth. They don't, they don't, they think they don't like the taste of it already before they even know what it is. And it's one of those things where just like anything, when you're trying to expose something, and I, I can't remember who said, it, I think it was Mond about being an influencer. Make no mistake. We are all influencers within our own genres. Uh, Berlin is wants people to know that what they think they know about science is not necessarily the case. And you don't even know you're going to love this. So here, check this out. And you're, you're already in. Just because someone said, hey, look at this, you, you cast a spotlight on it, you're packaging it, and all of a sudden, you're drawn in. Now, how deep you go, that's up to you. But if he hadn't said it, you wouldn't even thought it, let alone wanted to know more. The same thing goes with the people you interview. The same thing goes with the random stuff that comes on my channel. But yep. we're all influencers, whether we want to be or mean to be or not. I didn't mean to be, but I recognize that I've become that. Davey, you have been that since the word go, and you, you had that mission for it. You want to influence people to explore these other areas of Twitch that you would not have been into. Bolin, you're, you're, you're doing it more than either one of us are put together. So it's one of those things where our communities are only what they are because there's people behind them, like ourselves, that whether or not we're crusading with a flag in our hand for it doesn't really make a difference, but we do have a mission. 
and our mission is to draw people into something they might not have been otherwise. That's it. And he's doing it. And he's doing it well. It's mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said, Carlo. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now, random questions from chat. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do it, everybody. Here we go. Oh. I gotta find the button. This the this is the weekly trying to find the button for the random question song. Hold on. A second. I was waiting for the pro <laughs> yes, found it. All right, here we go. I think I got it. I think you got it now. Here we go. Do the dance. It's time for random questions. Good stuff. Ask us anything. Sorry about that, folks. I keep forgetting to add the second person into the feed. So, um, but. Uh, uh, for, Mons, if we could uh, open the random questions queue, um, I would now like to invite all of you to send questions to our friend Belint, the way you do it, and, and Carlo too, if you want to. Um, exclamation point question followed by the question itself. And uh, you can, the question can be about anything under the sun, the process, science, microscopy, streaming, food, really anything that you, are, you have on your mind. We'd love to hear from you about it. So, uh, uh, oh, thank you very much, Mons. And PJ, welcome in. Thank you so much for joining us for a little bit tonight. Nice to see you again, my friend. So, uh, Zapping Master um, X Morlith, I am so glad to have you with us on the chat tonight too. I, thanks for hanging out with us all all night. And um, but yeah, we, I we would love to hear anything from any of you about anything under the sun. Um, you know, Bill, since we're we're talking about questions, you know, when you do presentations um, at various institutions, and often at the end of them, you get questions from the audience. Um, do you ever worry about that? Do you relish the challenge of the kind of questions you might get um, when when it comes to part, you know, when it comes to audience audience questions at the end of a presentation? Carlo, do you want to go first? Oh. No, I think I have heard enough from me. <laughs> <laughs> I I love questions. Mm -hmm. If if there's a question, it means someone was engaged. Yes. If yeah. there are no, like, that's how, like, when I've given scientific talks and I've given them at high schools to plenary sessions in China, if there's no question, you did a terrible job because yep. that means it's not interesting to anyone. And, you know, the worst case scenario is I can tell, like, I don't know. And maybe it's not no. We've had questions. My favorite questions in the chat are when actually scientific knowledge does not, we do not know in science what the answer is. And so we form a hypothesis. There are times we pull up the drawing tablet and I draw out the experiment that we test to get that answer and see, and we, we even come up with predictive results. And we have no idea what the answer could be, but that's the cool part about science is if you're doing an experiment where any result is cool, that's the best part. And that's what those kinds of questions are. Now, again, if someone asks me about the physics of a neutrino, I'll straight up tell you, I have no idea. I can't even research that afterward because it's, it's not going to process. But if it's something biology related that I'm not an expert in, I can take a look and I can like report back to them like the next stream or we come up with a hypothesis. And like, I'd rather y'all stump me than I just babble on about everything. <laughs> It's amazing creativity, though. I, I'm really impressed with the with the with the with, with the uh, with the strategy involved in how how to address questions. That's you definitely got a lot of experience in that area. That's really cool. Um, but that's great. I mean, I think that's I think just being able to speak in front of people is such a big thing. And and I know that in the field of science, that will happen more often than not because there will be presentations, there'll be talks about things. And I think having that. How 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 long did it take before you had that that in you to be able to do that regularly and not feel like awkward about it, or does it still feel awkward for you, like being in in a setting of that caliber? So when I was an undergrad, I was lucky that I was in a research lab and I had a really good mentor. Not the professor who was in the lab; they tend not to be the mentors. It tends to be either a graduate student or a postdoctoral fellow, which is someone with their PhD who's working in a lab to kind of prep for their own lab one day. And there was a gentleman by the na name of Nathan Mortimer. He was the best mm -hmm. man at my wedding. So it tells you how well we took off. Wow. And he, and he taught me how to think and talk like a scientist. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing was because before then, when I gave presentations, I would memorize the slides. And so it was like a robot. And it's like, unfortunately, there's no training in science. When I went to undergrad, grad school, or postdoc to present. 
it's all kind of either on you or word of mouth of how you learn. So Nate taught me, he got me this presentation at the, the, the monthly fly meeting at Emory where the grad school, stu grad students, postdocs, professors get together and they present really cool fruit fly research being done at Emory. And he's like, Blint, you're going to present after me. We're going to do the split. And I'm like, Nate, I can't do that. He's like, you're going to do it. And so hit the prep was, I was like, well, how do I prep? He's like, he's like, get the slides. I'm like, okay. And he's like, okay, do not think about them again. Wow. So then it's five o'clock on a Friday, 5.30 rolls around. It's my turn. Puts a beer in my hand and says, go. And so the whole thing was not having it robotic and being able, like I have, you know, images as guides. Like my slides are always, here's an image. There's no text on there, right? Because otherwise, as soon as you have text, people are just going to start reading your text. No one's listening to it anymore. So like learning these little secrets, I no longer need a beer in my hand. But that was like at the very beginning to just like pull you down. And so then that became my presentation style is just more casual, but you end up learning even though you we're just chatting. That's amazing. That's, that's awesome. Like to be able to get a hang handle on that. And then it's really great the way that they, they coached you into doing it too. That's really cool. So uh, let's get to the questions, everybody. So thank you so much for all the questions and the, and uh, I really do appreciate you. And, and I, let's go first to Nona Silverstar. And the question is, how did you zero down on your stream schedule? It's a great question. So for us, for a long time of almost, it's a pretty much a year straight from January to January, it was seven days a week. And it was different things each day. So microscopy on Monday, Tuesday was when Lita was on, we'd play retro game, usually Sonic, because if you didn't know, hedgehog signaling in the body, which is the thing that caught like proteins that cause you to have a certain number of digits, like during development, like to have the right number of fingers, bone structure formation, you name it. Those are genes named after Sonic the Hedgehog. So there's hedgehog signaling and multiple other, like there's Sonic Hedgehog and a couple of other ones. So we played Sonic and we talked about the biology of it. Um, Wacom Wednesday, Thursday, we dissected sci-fi science, like a Star Trek episode and the science behind it. Friday is science news. Saturday, we deep dive into a scientific topic. Sunday is science art. That was seven days a week for a year until a little one was born with the occasional day off for a holiday or something like that. Um, the times, I don't know how we came up with the times. We had, it's uh was Monday, Wednesday, were afternoons, evenings, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then midday, Sunday, Saturday. And it's just, we just stuck with it. I mean, it, it was a grind. Like it was not an instant people like showing up, right? It was, it was seven days a week for at least a year. And it was just day in, day out. You know, there's the four hours of stream and then there's three hours of prep beforehand. And then there's the eight hour job before that. Oh, wow. Holy mackerel. That's right. And I had wondered for, I actually wondered about that, about your, your daytime, your day job. So does you know, your day job for, um, are you able to work at home for any of that? Or is that usually on site? So I, I'm lucky enough to work from home. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. There's occasional site visits we have to do like for mm -hmm. conferences, but most of the time it's from home, which lets me, you know, hang out with Carla that day. Yeah. Nice. Standard time for Carla. Benefits. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, Smex24 is, is having a great... Um, I love all your comments in chat. Is that is that Lita? Double no, Smex is our lovely mod. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Lita is with the baby right now. Oh, okay, Smex right is pretty. Smex is, is very handsome. He's handsome as ferret. Anyway. Love it. Love it. Smex says... <laughs> he was trolling a little bit earlier. says that science streams, true streams, lies, and propaganda. <laughs> Like this must be someone that knows you very well. So I was like, <laughs> no, no, no. He said it was lies and propaganda that I didn't accept. That I'm the hardest working. Oh, person. okay, that makes more sense now. Okay, okay. No, okay. no, he wasn't. He wasn't. I'm, I'm gonna reinforce that though, Belin. You are the hardest working person I've seen on Twitch. Absolutely. I'm gonna say that over some of the ambassadors I've seen. Truth, truth, truth be told, and not because of the dedication to your channel. Not even, not even that, but that. And I think uh, Elves was the one who said it in the chat earlier about how. Actually, no, she didn't say this, but she, it's what what she said made me think of it was you stop whatever slide you're on 
my metaphorically speaking and otherwise. And if you recognize somebody in chat, the spotlight shifts and now you are three to five minutes talking at length, not just say, hey, can we get a shot up there? Great. No, you talk at length. I don't know how, okay, I'm, I'm your friend. I know you stream seven days a week. I know most of the time what you're doing those days. I made a change in my schedule and like two days later, we did a, we did a, uh, a collab and you were telling people off the top of your head, my new schedule. Who are you? I mean, nobody, <laughs> I'm not even that good about telling people about my schedule. And so you are championing every person that you recognize in your chat. If they're a streamer that you're going to find out about them and you don't get to pay attention to what we were talking about. I've actually, I actually asked you mid, mid collab one night, I messaged you and I said, Hey, didn't you, that guy that was back up in chat a few times ago, he asked you a question. You're like, Oh yeah, that guy's a, don't pay attention to him. We were talking about you. Like you just completely dismissed some guy who was talking about science because you were there talking about me. And I'm like, and that's what I'm saying. So like, yeah, hardest working on the fly in real time, off the top of your head, you jump from, from science to art, to packaging and promotional of other streamers to, to everything. And you do this like damn near out, like it's completely scripted already in your head. And it's, and yet it's completely coming out natural. So Hats off to, I'm sorry, Morris, did you say your best man's was? Uh, Nathan. 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 I don't worry. Is his last name Morris? Did I completely Mortimer. make that up? A oh, Mormon. Okay. I thought I had Nathan something along those lines. Up. I'm not completely scrolled off, but no, like, <laughs> thank goodness to that guy who got you to break form and, and be natural because you you do that. And I, I didn't mean to make this a gush about Berlin stream, even though that's probably what it's always going to be. <laughs> well, dude, right. how many right. times on a public platform do I get to say, to speak truth about someone who is literally doing way beyond the paid raid, way beyond the job description, you do it. And you do it with this grace and this just this cheesy smile on your face like, yeah, 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 go on. But the, the truth is you're doing this amazing thing. If anybody else, if anybody else had worked hard to get where you are and had that platform, I'm going to throw the gauntlet down. I'm going to, anybody in this chat that you know that would continue, by the way, after achieving their goal, making partner, reaching the follow count you have, reaching the people you have with, with what you want to accomplish as a scientist, and still use that platform to further the agenda of other streamers unselfishly. Show me one that's done that. I haven't seen one other than you. I haven't, not one. That's amazing. I didn't see people doing that before they achieved it, and you definitely don't see it after they achieve it. So when people ask you questions about yourself and you speak from this place of humility, like, I didn't know how to talk in front of people. You know, it took a beer for me to get started. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's be fair. Everybody took a beer to be started, to, to get started. There's no, That's true. There's nobody that didn't. But <laughs> seriously, I mean, some of us had, we, we, we moved on to harder beverage items, did we not? So, so it's one of those things where I just marvel at it, sir. I do. And, and, and it probably sounds like I'm being artificial. And I hope it's not because I genuinely mean every single word that you do not hesitate to use your powers and your platform for immense good for more than just yourself. And, and you don't even think of it that way. That's what, that's what makes it that you're just, you're just doing it. You know, it's, it's just coming out of you and to, to cycle back, to take the focus off link, cause you're going to stab me through the screen in a second is that's what it's going to take to get people to try new things. That's what it's going to take to get people to get out of their comfort zones, to leave the echo chamber. It's going to take someone being that unselfish, that humble about their own craft, about their own category, yep. and using it to say, hey, did you guys know about that? And that's how this happens. And you do it. And, and I know I'm way down a rabbit hole and scrolling off on a tangent. And I really don't care because I'm going to use my <laughs> power to and do this the same. No, so Carl, seriously, it. it's just a thing. Just amazing. Just amazing. This oh, was okay. not, by the way, brought upon by adult beverage items, hence the bottled water. In my <laughs> I, got, I got a tea. No, I mean, I got that. <laughs> I got that Coke. So when, no, no, now, it's a, now it's a podcast. We can get a force <laughs> we dump all on non <laughs> We're all on clean beverages and, right now. And but, the reason that's such so big is because the folks who come in to the stream, they have a craft and I believe in them and I want them to achieve whatever they want to be able to achieve out of this if it's on Twitch or if they're using Twitch as a medium to achieve what they want elsewhere, let's make it happen, right? If there's a there's a one inch of something I can do to help you achieve your goals, 
let's do it. Except with you, Carla, I want to push you all the way to like Twitch ambassador, but that's neither here nor there. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. Ooh, wrong one. But I'm with you on that idea. Let's do it. We'll do that one together. Y'all, get let's Carlo for ambassador. Who says no? Everyone in chat. Start start the uh start the advertising and like <laughs> we he already has it in his command on our channel. This hashtag scribe for partner, and then we're gonna have scribe for ambassador. It's 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 happening. Love it. I like how people in chat recognize that this is an awkward moment for Blint right now, but every time he says that, nobody says, Wow, this is an awkward moment for Carlo right now. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny i i didn't see we've been seeing all this uh, first of all let's say a lot of morgana dreamfire some um key key all oh, right that's <laughs> kc key key cu 23 we're gonna we'll circle back to that question at some we might circle back to that question at some point it's gonna, de oh it's gonna depend on how much time we have and <laughs> But Jerry St. Louis, I, I had a really funny question. I just had sat. Wait, oh gosh, that's a great question too. The, the, the sour cream question. But Joey said, "Why do we drive in driveways and park in parkways?" I've. And there's a serious answer to that question. I, I just want to make a point of that. Like there is actual re a reason for that, but we'll get to that. Another, but, but I love. I do always love that question. There's so many questions in chat. I do want to say I'm sorry if I missed you in chat. Greatly good to see you again as well. Um. It's a great place to be. So Scissorman has the next question. And uh, Belen, Carlo Live Snack. So what is your favorite snack? It goes against my diet. I really love sandwiches. That's my favorite snack is to make a sandwich. Because you can have a sandwich for a main course. I'm not saying that you can't. But having a smaller portion of bread with something else, on, like, you know, that mm -hmm. Hungarian salami, that just some cheese on oh. That sounds. Like... So what am I supposed to say? My Optivia bar, of course. <laughs> <laughs> my, my Optivia diet. I love it. It's great. A sandwich is never a side dish. No. Never. But maybe. Well, what about soup? What if you have a giant bread bowl soup, and you have a small sandwich next to it that you can dip in, <laughs> like a grilled cheese that you can dip in? The That's not food. a side dish. That's a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like when you have a. Um... You ever have like a burger, or like a grilled cheese sandwich in the burger? Like they've had, there's been some fast food restaurants that are trying that. It's like, that's kind of like having two sandwiches, really. Like it's like a sandwich in the sandwich, sandwichception of so, of sorts. Then I have a I have a question for you, Davey. There's a sandwich in Atlanta, Georgia. There's a, a restaurant called mm -hmm. the Vortex, and they have a sandwich called the uh, uh, Triple Bypass. Oh my gosh! And it is. The buns are grilled cheese. There's oh. eggs. There's bacon. There's multiple layers. It's like a tower. Oh. It's like thirty thousand calories or something like that with fries. If you can finish it in an hour, you get it for free. Is that a sandwich or is that multiple sandwiches? If you live for another hour after that, they have to pay your your your. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I, I mean, <laughs> it's a threat to your it's a threat to your exist your ability to live is what it is, right? But you can get it with bison meat. You know, it's healthier. <laughs> So less meat, less fat crabs. Okay. Um, Great taste, less filling. Oh goodness gracious! I mean, we had a we had a hard stopper burger up here uh, at a at a, at a I, Well, let me just uh, quickly. I mean, box. just to answer that, like it is one sandwich. Like you can combine things that normally would be in separate sandwiches, and that would certainly be sandwiches. In in the te most technical terms, yes, it is probably one sandwich. Because if you think about it, a Big Mac has like three buns, right? Like there's like a little middle bun piece. So is that two? Is that two hamburgers or is that one hamburger? Well, for most people, we call that one hamburger. So I think that it's would still one be hamburger. one sandwich. So it's, even... a, it's the club sandwich of burgers. That doesn't make it not a burger. Yeah, it's still that. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, the heart stopper, Carlo. Tell us more. Oh, the short, short version is it's a deep fried mozzarella and bacon stuffed burger. It's three quarters of a pound of meat before you put any of that stuff in it, and then they deep fry grilled cheese sandwiches for the top and bottom crust and then wait for it there's more the grilled cheese sandwiches themselves are also battered and deep fried oh so it's gosh. not just that the bread is but yeah it's crazy talk uh i ordered it strictly to cut it with a fork to try it to tell people whether it tasted good or not and then i promptly passed it back over the counter because i just said i'm here for science not for not for lunch <laughs> oh <laughs> like my literally God. it's uh it was crazy and it would yeah. don't get me wrong it tasted good, but I do not know anyone who would order that outside of just the dare factor. It just was obnoxious. I completely agree. 
Uh, there's, there's, I, I will say, as a connoisseur of the sandwiches, like I, I do find that a little excessive at certain points. Like you're, now, you're just just doing it just to do it. It's like, is exactly. this really good? I, I'm, I'm more interested in how it tastes and how big it is. Like, exactly. Honestly, exactly. so it's a really great topic, but like, I, would you eat it? I guess is my query to you. Like, would you take the go to Atlanta and have one of those, or even like split it with, uh, with lead with. With Lita, just to see. Well, she's a vegetarian, so I would. I would oh wow! I'd, okay. I'd, I'd absolutely order that. Now I've, right? I've lived <laughs> in it. I've lived in it. I, we went to the Vortex all the time. I just okay. never ordered it because it was fifty dollars. And as an undergrad, I'm like, I can't spend fifty dollars on a sandwich. Yeah. But you, you, you better believe if someone's buying that. Ooh, I'm eating that. I don't care <laughs> my high calorie, high calorie count. Let's go. I love that. I guess when I was a child, I, I should say no. Okay. My, but I have good life insurance, so we're good. <laughs> Now, 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 now that's a that's dead a response. That's a go-getter right there. <laughs> I know, right? Like, seriously. Oh, that's fantastic. Let me catch up There's on no the chat. no single guy ever considered life insurance to be the follow-up question of going in to try that thing at a restaurant. <laughs> Only a dad would invoke that after, after that. Yeah. No. <laughs> and a good dad, no less. <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, so... Notice Silverstar says they have a monster burger and a monster omelet challenge at a place called Omelet House here in Nevada that they will take your picture and put it on their wall of fame if you eat it yourself. I've seen that. It's like, is that worth a is that worth a photo to like be no sick of food for three days because you ate something like that? No. I don't right, stupid. Depends on who's on the wall. <laughs> Is Arnold Schwarzenegger on the wall? You better believe I want my photo. <laughs> this is a great. These are great points. He's not wrong. He's I mean, not I, wrong. I exactly. Yeah, That's absolutely. A point. Um, oh, we, had take... a, we had a burrito place in Macon, Georgia, where I grew up. It was mm -hmm. the same thing. You had an hour to eat this burrito. Davey, I ordered this burrito and I had it done in 15 minutes. Yeah. I didn't want my photo taken. I, Carl, I mean, I was. It was not a great wall to be on. It's not a great wall to be on. But I, I mean, like 15 minutes I was done. I'm like, oh, I, I feel like I can get another one of this, right? <laughs> wow, uh, I would really? That they take that That's photo an appetite. Before I started eating. Do not take the photo after I'm done eating your contest. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very not good a good point. Life, not a good life choice. Like, don't don't. No, you want the meat sweats? You want the meat sweats? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why they yeah. want to do yes, this, the photo. Point. You like... want to scare away other people from trying to bust the record? <laughs> yes. If you see the meat sweats, don't order the thing. <laughs> this is a great entertainment value for everybody else around in the building, right? <laughs> not necessarily for Hi, yourself. Tech, have a good night, sir. I tech, have a great night, and thank you so much for all your inc amazing um, generosity tonight. Honestly, I'm blown away. I appreciate you being part of this tonight, Hi, Tech. All the best. Um, I think they have a boxer on the wall, but I'm bad at names. Uh, Nevada, that tracks. Yeah, Nevada, that would track for sure. Kalara Dragon, hello there. Welcome in. Welcome in. How, how's it going tonight? We've been having a great conversation with uh, the science streams and and uh, the stream scribe tonight. And so, Scissorman, you've spawned some really incredible conversation with that question. Let's keep going. Um, Reco Recording Goblin has this. And here's just a really good question because I, I really did want to venture into this. Um, how did you meet the beautiful one, Bellant? Carlo? So, uh, <laughs> again, like a, a great train. <laughs> And then he actually <laughs> waited to us on a Wednesday because of Lita. Carl, I don't know if you remember this. You did a, a line art for Lita. Yeah. And then you talked with her for like 20 minutes as you were doing it. And then you're like, well, anyone have a suggestion? Like, let's write a new person. And you were like, Lita was like, let's write, let's write the science guy. And then you were like, oh, okay. That's, I don't know who this is. And I was, I was like, oh, my lovely wife, Lita. And you're like, wait a minute. How did this happen? That's how I met Carla. I, I was duped. Phenomenal. <laughs> well, my yeah, has been playing with me for toying with me since how long now? We, we yeah, he, he he has a lot of fun at my expense. <laughs> I love your face. You, I know no. you do. It's a good thing. Too. I look forward to one p.m. every day. I know he's live, and it just warms my heart. And then Mondays are some of my favorite streams because we have art and science together. This man is a gem. He should be protected at all costs. And scry for partner. I'm telling you. <laughs> King just says this just in Carlo's autograph just went up in value. And Sizzman, <laughs> Carlo, the beautiful one, the new meme, Carlo. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. 
Fantastic. That's an emote right there. Someone grab that. Yeah, that's that's got to – yeah, absolutely. If you got a screen capture, get that in there. Um, all right, so let's keep going. Zombie Master with a question. Favorite science fiction film? Wow. That's a great question. Um, Blunt, I'll let you tackle that one first. Did you want me to answer about Lita or no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love how – I love how <laughs> – wait a second. You should probably make this a little bit about Lita. <laughs> Only if you want to. I mean, we could we could leave Carlos. Absolutely, Carlo's we can. We can. can. <laughs> FYI, Chad Balin would like to share his bed with his wife tonight, and he would like to do that with a smile on his face and not sneaking in after. Very good strategy. In trouble, but... leaving his wife completely out of the question. <laughs> that was about her, no less. <laughs> Very good point. Um, yeah, but absolutely. Let's let's save your <laughs> ability to go to bed tonight. Um, so I was a uh, freshman in college, and she was doing the master's of public health program at Emory. And she, most of the master's of public health students, they need to do a master's thesis. Most of them do a meta analysis, which means you take existing data in a publication and you reanalyze it and you hope to find something new. So like if I put out data that is from 50 different patients from 30 different hospitals that have cancer and we're looking at the metastatic rate of cancer, let's say. And then you as a public health student might say like, okay, can I correlate air, climate, temperature with the cancer cases, let's say, right? That would be a meta-analysis. Uh, instead, she wanted to do direct basic science research and she was studying the genetic basis of resistance to DDT, which is an insecticide uh, by putting in the um, a particular gene into fruit flies and seeing if it makes them resistant. So she joined the lab the same time I did. And I remember it was a lab meeting that she was introduced. And I remember the professor pointing at her, she said, that's Lita. And she like did a little wave. I still remember that little wave that she did. Um, and we were, you know, we were friends for many years until then we became a couple. And we were, um, we worked in the same lab that then when I was an undergrad and she was a master's student, worked in the same lab when we were getting our PhDs at Dartmouth. And then at Penn, we were postdocs who worked on the same floor, not the same lab. Oh, wow. What a beautiful story that is. I mean, people always say, don't they, they always told her and me too, don't you get sick of your significant other? Y'all work with each other and see each other at home. And Lita would always like, no, I married my husband because I like him. Oh, <laughs> be like, that's that's huge. I didn't, she didn't marry you because she loved you. She married you because she liked you. That's different, right? Yeah, you can love you, someone. Definitely. Like, I, I kind of want to like, I got a thing now. I want to say love it first slide. <laughs> slide. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I, I just got that. Hey, Carly, really? I mean, I, I, I'm i very impressed by your pun game tonight. This is great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> it's like first slide. I love it. Um, let's see. <laughs> Um, NMD96 has, has been summoned to this program. Welcome in. Nice to see you tonight. I do want to thank uh, JP Sunset World Working for the follow several minutes ago. Uh, I thank you so much for hanging for the follow and welcome to the Sam Fam. It's nice to see you. Um, Nona Silver Star, bravo, Carlo. My heart is happy. Bring the puns, <laughs> keep them coming, my friend. Um, so next question favorite science fiction film now. For someone invested in science, this is going to be a very, very exciting question for me. So, Belant, how would you? What is your favorite science fiction film? I'm a sucker for Star Wars. Does that qualify? I think so. What do you think, Carlo? Like, that's always been a debate about that. Like, is it sci-fi? Is it fantasy? Is it action? Is I'm, it... I'm going to quote Pulp Fiction and say, "Man, I don't even have an opinion." <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. like that is a that is a nerfable rabbit hole yeah. and black hole if there ever was one. <laughs> well, I am of the position to be more inclusive in these matters, so I would absolutely qualify it. But yeah, the reason I bring that up is because I know there's some people who don't. So I'm going to set the record straight and say, yes, it qualifies. And yes, I love it. Pumpkin. And if we are okay, going by. Fine. Now, now that you've said it, oh, yeah, I'll say that too. That definitely qualifies as sci fi. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it... the best movies within any genre are ones that cannot be pigeonholed into their genre. So, yes. Star Wars is very much a a drama, a comedy, a, a, all the things. Yeah, but that, but it's all that's what also makes it 
at the top of its category of sci-fi. Uh, so yeah, there's no there's no doubt that it is. I just you, didn't want you know, to it's like the idea of new worlds and discoveries and how there's yes. different ecosystems, there are different planets. There's also the the Clone Wars animated show. We've got the new ones coming out with like Mandalorian. It's just that whole world that's built is really cool. I mean, it's also like I like Star Trek too, which so I know it's like now I'm just going to the two easy ones, but it's the world building element, right? Yeah. Like the different aliens, the, the interactions, like it's complex interactions. The drama is like Carlo was saying. It's not just, hey, bug, shoot, pew, and then run off. But if it needs to be a one-off movie, Galaxy Quest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Call it solid choice. I love Galaxy Quest. It's a good one. So, uh, yeah, Peppercorn followed up with outside of Star Wars. So Galaxy Quest, nice. Um, what would I pick outside of that? I don't know. Does well, I guess Star Trek, right? <laughs> Which one though? I don't know. See, how do you pick a favorite Star Trek movie? That's hard. That's hard. I think a lot of people would say two. Um, like, would you have any particular leanings in that direction, Blunt? So I I saw the Star Treks late because mm-hmm. I grew up in I grew up in Hungary as a kid, and we didn't we wouldn't have exposed to it, and my parents didn't know about Star Trek right. really. Like they'd heard about it, but star wars had made it over to eastern europe so when i was a kid growing up it was we watched star wars at home and i only really started watching star trek when the new generation of movies came out and then lita knows all about them so i watched ds9 and the originals and everything with lita so i've seen the dated they feel a little dated to me i just don't have that emotional connection so i really like the of the newest trilogy the third one okay like that one to me was like really really well done I'm with that. I'm with that. I, Carla, would you have a, a feeling on any of the Star Treks? So I, I too came into Star Trek late. I mean, I saw the older mm-hmm. ones as a kid, uh, but I didn't have a connection to them. I was, I think I would, I'm not going to say I was too young because I was obviously watching Star Wars, but that's actually the thing I think that differentiates between Star Trek is that Star Wars is story driven because it's epic. Star Trek is epic in its scope, but none of the individual episodes or movies within within themselves are really that epic. Uh, and I don't mean in terms of rating; I mean in terms of scope and size. So, so like they're smaller movies that deal with much more, you know, minute details, uh, just because they take place in space. So, so it's one of those things where I I didn't really get to appreciate uh, that they're more. Star Trek is a very is a vastly more intellectual franchise than Star Wars is. It just is. Oh no, Dad, no um, question. What's, yeah, and so because of that, I think it was lost to me when I was younger. Uh, so as an adult, I started watching the newer ones and then backtracking. Uh, and so I remember like taking a really big interest in, in and then this is probably sacrilege to anybody who's asking about the the most the, the biggest you know Star Trek movies. I was really a fan of Insurrection, uh, and and also First Contact. You know th- those two movies back to back. They those were the movies that kind of. Re- that introduced me to a much bigger world than the original Star Trek movies did. So when you had Next Generation uh, introduction and now backtrack into the old ones, I actually had a fondness for it because I had a foundation that I could identify with. Uh, and I feel like that's kind of like the thing. I mean, I'm, I don't know why my brain just went there, but I feel like that's kind of like the whole an overarching point of science is you start with what you know and then work backwards. You know, because if, if you don't, if you don't, um, start on something that feels familiar you really don't want to get familiar with anything that's 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 beyond you or pre before you so yeah first contact i'm going to say i said insurrection what i meant to say first contact and then i I liked insurrection but first contact was the one that really kind of stood out for me yeah this is kind of like the signature film of that particular era the the next generation cast era it's like first contact is the one that seems to be consensus like the best of the that group so it's a very solid ch- uh, select. <laughs> Gribbly says, <"Caw!" laughs> I, I will. I want to make a nod, though. I I had no real interest in going to see the newer ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Verse Zero, who is in my chat all the time, is a, my, uh, a real life friend and, and former uh, co-worker in weddings. And he's like, hey, you didn't have a car at the time. He's like, I want to go see the new Star Trek movie. Do you want to go to the midnight show with me? I'm like, so when you say that, you mean you want me to drive you to the midnight showing and you're going to pay my ticket? He's like, yeah. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Okay, so we go. I actually really enjoyed it. And so uh, this is a third generation now of Star Trek movies. And you don't, we don't really think about that. Uh, and it's true. and it was really great. I mean, I, Carl Urban pulling off that role was just spot on. I mean, he's amazing anyway, but like there, there's, there's, there needs to be more than just a respectful nod. These are these were really well done films. The new yeah. Ones 
I can definitely. I went. I went to this. I also we didn't have any real interest in the new Star Trek, but that's the same time when that X Men Origins Wolverine movie uh-huh. came out, and my sister uh-huh. and I love Wolverine. Sure. And so at Papa John's, there was this thing called a Wolverine pizza. I don't know if y'all you can Google this. It's just a <laughs> giant cheese pizza. Oh. And it uh, Star Trek came out like a week or two after the Wolverine movie came out. My sister's like, let's go watch a movie and get another like Wolverine pizza together. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you want to go watch? She's like, well, Star Trek. And I'm like, all right, let's go get a Wolverine pizza and watch Star Trek. <laughs> What was that a Wolverine pizza? Was it like, is it like sliced like differently or something like that? Like what? I, yeah, I think it was just a cheese pizza like from Papa John's. I think I, I like it had Wolverine on the box on the cover. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he was going like, and we're back to packaging. You see what they did there? <laughs> it, worked. Is... it worked. It worked. You know, I still <laughs> talk about it to this day over 10 years later uh, yeah you know we really like that wolverine pizza <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the same pizza that's funny <laughs> oh my gosh um and galara dragon i remember i remember that and then rick goblin says there's a debate that jk ripped off star wars <laughs> when she wrote the hobbit <laughs> that's, that's funny goblin. that's funny that's great uh, um some thank yous. Uh, Morgana, Dreamfire, the stream scrap, yourself, Carlo, King, and Rahomo. Thank you so much for the points for the Sticks Piano Stream Challenge. Like, really, really nice of you to do that. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we're moving along. Awesome. Um, next question from The Anchored Albatross. Have you accepted, Bellant, that you are the best dad on Twitch this at this moment and most handsome man in New Jersey, Bellant? So none of that is true. So our <laughs> friend Ford tonight is the most handsome man in New Jersey. He's a freestyle rapper extraordinaire here on the platform. He's amazing. Go check him out. Um, as for best father, no, no. This is my first child, and we're seven weeks in. Bit Gamey is the best father on Twitch. If anyone knows Bit Gamey, he's a game dev, a Unity game dev, working on a video game where you play as a dog. That man has four children. I have never seen anyone love their children as much as he does. He is easily the best father on Twitch. Grimley says, nice try, an- the anchored albatross. <laughs> a for effort, Albs. <laughs> a valiant attempt. A valiant attempt. All right, let's get to the next question from PJME. Davey, re- regarding retro games, would you ever consider playing Moon Patrol or Joust on stream? So this is a two-part question. One, would this I... Can- is, this is PJ trolling me without trolling me. <laughs> so we, <laughs> PJ, PJ and I have a fondness for retro games, and we got into it one night about Joust and Moon Patrol, about about how those were just kind of like unsung anymore. Oh, very much so. Um, well well done for working that into a sandwich show, PJ. You deserve some props for that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty remarkable. It's a show about science, no less, which is pretty good stuff. But um, one, I have played Joust on stream. It was a couple years ago, though. So I, I would I would definitely do it again. Um, and Moon Patrol, I, I have a lot of fun with that game. So I would definitely play that one again at, at some point. I'm sorry, I definitely played on stream at some point, too. I just haven't figured out when to play games on stream again. It's just kind of evolved into a like less game, but we'll talk about that another time. So I'm in the uh, same boat. I want a game more too. Yeah, those games are fun. Right. Like it, it's and it seems like the most clippable stuff. Like like a lot of the clips on my channel are about the games. <laughs> Davey failing at games. Oh my goodness, look who's joined us tonight, dude! Welcome in. Hello, dude. Let's get the roll that beautiful bean footage. Let's go take everybody a look at on, dude. Everybody on the internet. Uh, yeah, no. Food? Anybody got any food? Yeah, that's it. Talk to Scissor Man. It's great to see you, dude. <laughs> oh, so nice. What an adorable little pup that your he's, friend is. He's just, I love this little freak. The best. The best. Um, <clears throat> an easy game system to use the community is Jackbox. Right. Um, yeah. I've been talked to. I've been asked. I've been taught. That's been. That's a good suggestion too. Um, because that one you can involve the chat with. But we have to remember though. One thing I'm gonna just tell everybody here: do not give the code on the stream. Apparently, that that invites some real trouble. So you might have to do it different ways. To do it on Discord or Whispers or some other way to do it. But um, that's something I've been seeing on, on for certain streams lately. And so, but anyway, back to business. Smikes twenty four. The next question: Who's smarter, Blint or Lita? Oh, Lita, hands down. There's, there's no, there's none, the, that woman's intelligence is unmatched. I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go the other way on that. I'm gonna say Belint because he, he found a way to get her. You cannot trick that one. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna say hey if 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 what was it you said you were a freshman and she was a grad student? Yep. Well, okay, I'm gonna say the facts are speaking for themselves, my friend. <laughs> it was the hair. It was the hair. <laughs> Notice his answer too fast. Uh Spike says, I'm gonna have to agree with science and here. Sorry, <laughs> but let <laughs> wait, wait. Perfect pixels. No yeah, argument I there. Grimly, I can't trick any lady. I'm, I'm <laughs> the goofiest goober. Well, you, you, if my flirting days were hilarious. Oh, I didn't say he tricked her. I said he got her. Ah. <laughs> the fact that she, from from the wave, you didn't. He, you heard his emphasis about how he still remembers the wave, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm not going to go. I'm, I'm okay. No offense. I'm not going to pull rank here. I'm a wedding planner. I can spot the the gooey from a mile away. Okay. So, so let me throw this at you. So she gives you the wave. That means she noticed you. Did you know she gave her? one wave to the room? Uh-huh. But you said, and I quote, I still remember the wave. That's true. Now, I'm going to also say that she noticed that you noticed. <laughs> uh-huh. Someday, one day, Davey, mark my words, on the sandwich show uh, at, on 3-15-23, it will go down and record that I actually managed to get silence as an answer from Belinda when I stated some truth. <laughs> just, just putting that down. It's, it's a beautiful sentiment that I would love, love to believe. You know what? I'll take that as a win, too. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I love it. Um, Spike, thank you so much for the question. Next, we go to... to V oh yeah V V tries to chat, and uh, V has a response to the, the follow up to the question too. But let's go to the question first. Question for both Belent and Carlo. Let's end this debate once and for all. Who is the true sir? Although V responded later, this just in the battle of handsomeness has ended. Belent is officially sir. I don't have the hair. I can't win. It's not at all true. Listen, Davy Carlo has been voted on by the single most handsome man in the state of New York. Many is ever since Grimley gave up his crown. I want to. I want a recount of these ballots to prove this. There's, there's no need. There's it's it's such an overflow. There's no. There's not even close. There's no point to recounting. And, oh, and why the server? So Davy, one Carlo was here with us one night. Lita and I were both on. <laughs> this was great. I he comes. I don't know why, but I beat the table with a fist and I screamed, "The sir is here!" And it became a thing that he is in fact with all the passion you can scream, "Sir." He is the sir. Wow. Yes, our, our love blossomed very early on. It was passion. Oh, I could tell. I could see the sparks from the beginning, everybody. I, I knew it. I knew it from the from the jump. Absolutely. It was it was <laughs> love at first stream. <laughs> uh, Maria, so good to see you at the stream store. Welcome in. That's nice to see you. Let's give our, sh our friend a shout out. Makers and crafts streamer specializing pottery. So good to see you, Maria. Welcome in. <laughs> So nice to see you. Grimley says, when I met Carl for the first time, Carl? What? So my real name is Carlo, but before that, this is this is all, oh. this is like a mystery wrapped in an enigma for people. But okay. I went by Carl for years because my I'm the third, actually. Okay. And um, so my father went by Carlo. My grandfather was Big Carl, and I was Little Carl. Do you know how much of a, of a, a hilarious fat joke it is to call me Little Carl? It is. Just laugh at it because it's funny to me still. So I'm the only one left now. My father and grandfather have passed. So so now I, I went back to using my real name. Um, so that, it's funny, though, because Grimley met me in a time when that wasn't the case. And so people who knew me before, you can actually tell who knew me pre-Twitch, pre-weddings, and that just based on what they called me. It's just so funny how that works. Interesting. Okay. Well, um... now, Grimley might be the only one that uses it on Twitch, which, you know, I can't change him. He's... It's what happens when your best friend pulls rank. <laughs> oh, no worries. I mean, I think there's always, you know, the one thing that, that, that the, the, the great thing with that is that you can go by both names. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's definitely, they're not, not your name. That's kind of a good. No, but it makes people ask like, huh, who's Carl? And I'm like, yeah, uh, there you go again. <laughs> See, it worked. You just, it just happened. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That, mm -hmm. that is true. Good point. So, um, so the third debate has ended. That's, I love that. Let's continue now for from Peppercorn Lace. Uh, thank you so much for hanging with us tonight, Peppercorn. The question for all three: Do you like coffee? Oh, I'll answer that this way. Yeah. 
the cup is empty. Wow. Yes, I like coffee. <laughs> Valent? I love coffee, but I've had to switch to decaf, unfortunately. Oh, I got you. I for got you. Uh, blood pressure. But I love coffee. The best coffee, though, I have to say, was we've had it once. It was uh, it was grown in like the volcanic soil in Hawaii. It was like we had a we had a family trip one time out there, and that was the you never you didn't have to add any sugar, you didn't have to add any milk. It was just straight up the smoothest and best thing ever, right? Because there's no bitter aftertaste, there's no acid reflux. It's just I I could just live off that. Give me an IV of that it would be amazing. You know, but I... also as a scientist with and, and the streamer, the hours I keep, I need coffee. So I better I better I better like it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's it's 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 definitely part of the lifeblood of every scientific institution. You know, I I, I t I've seen it firsthand. And uh, peppercorn slice is sad. I get that though. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, um, Crimbley says. So is there is that a coffee you can have now? I don't think so because you mentioned decaf. What what would? What oh, would I you... mean, I still I will still have caffeinated coffee. Oh, okay. Like on special occasion, okay. if if that coffee came up to the front door, I would. I would have that. Coffee. Oh, nice. Okay. So again, I have good life insurance. We're fine. <laughs> the, house will, the house will be paid for if I pass. That's okay. Good. Okay. Well, there you go, Grimley. That's a pretty good side. That's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good silver lining, I think. Uh, Goblin says I switched to tea. Yeah, I like tea too, though. Like <clears throat> now, I think you mentioned, Belinda, that you are a tea person. Like, what are your favorite types of tea? So. The Harney and Sons brand okay. is my favorite. And then I'll, during the day, I'll have their black currant black tea or citrus green tea. And then right now in the evenings, I like um, it's a fruit tea. It's a strawberry kiwi herbal blend. And it's just absolutely delicious. I love it. I love it. Um, OK, so um, Carlo is going to be returning in just a moment, but uh, um so we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll hang out. We'll have Carlo back in just a bit. Um, but that's really great. You know, I think black tea is probably my lean too. Green is good too, but that's kind of where I go. I'm not as familiar with the brands, but I, I think those are good choices. And so one last question tonight, and then we'll close a queue. Um, says or Mrs. Honey or whiskey in the tea blend? <laughs> it's, it's honey. Oh, honey. Okay, great. Love it. Um, I probably would go. I would probably go lemon. I think <laughs> whiskey and the tea. That's funny. That's funny. Well, I, I think if you get the combo, honey and lemon is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not 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 whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with whiskey. It's just you know. Yeah. I hear you on that. Let's see. Alrighty. So let's uh, let's go to the final question. And this is a question we get. We get this kind of question a lot on the Sandwich Show because. For quite a bit of the first year of our operations, we were asked, is a taco, I mean, sorry, is a hot dog a sandwich? And so in the beginning of the story of this, of the, of the, of, um, of the show's history, I, I said, no, I have since been convinced that it's a yes. So now I'm a little more forgiving in, in the boundaries of what, is, what makes a taco a sandwich. So the question from Morgan and Dreamfire is, is a taco a sandwich? No. Ah, a sandwich needs to have a top and bottom bun. Okay, that is one unified piece. A wrap is also not a sandwich. Neither is a hot dog. Okay, so if we if we assess the hot dog aspect of that of that of, of, of your of your response, when you talk about when you talk about a a, a hoagie, right, a hoagie or um, a hero or wherever you may come from, whatever you want to call it, do you qualify that as a sandwich? because of the idea of it having a top and a bottom bun, but it is connected. So would that still be a sandwich? But those are savages who don't cut through all the way. Right? A sand like mm -hmm. that bread should have been cut through all the way for a hoagie. Right? That's just an un that's uncut bread. Versus different for a hot dog. For a hot dog you're holding it in place like that because you have to eat it vertically. A hoagie you still eat like a regular sandwich. Wait do you eat it vertically though? That's, that's an interesting. I guess that's a, that's an interesting way to look at it. I, I can certainly subscribe to that. Yeah. I eat the hoagie as a horizontal, like a regular sandwich. Yeah, like this, right? Or, yeah. Yeah. Versus okay. a hot dog, it's vertical open. So a hot dog bun has to hold it, so it's not split okay. into two buns. Okay. Versus the hoagie, I don't know. I like it if it's split all the way. 
I think the only reason it's not is so that they can better wrap it. That's fascinating. I it's the the counter argument I would have the only and it's not it's a little thing, but I I would say I do eat the hot dog like this too though. But I see what you're saying because like you can hold it like this. You cannot do that with a larger sandwich, right? Like you cannot do a meat. Like could you? Would you ever try to be able to meatballs up that way? That would never work. Yeah, I mean that's a question too. Like do meatballs like belong in a sandwich? Oh wow, this could get very. We could end up with a, well. What what what's your feeling there? Uh, you know, it, it, I guess it just depends on the size, right? Because yeah. of the meatballs that you see sometimes at Subway and some of the local shops here, it's just like it eats up most of the sandwich. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you're right to your point. Like meatballs can be huge. They can be the size of like, they can be the size of softballs. That'd be crazy to think of that fitting in a sandwich, right? So, it's I like if I need a fork knife to eat it, it's not a sandwich anymore. Yeah. Right, if it's such a massive sandwich that you can't actually, like, my mouth cannot bite into it, then is it, it's not a sandwich. Then it's just, like, a meal that's dressed with bread. <laughs> oh, it's you know what? That's that's phenomenal. That's a phenomenal point because, like, you, you, you ever hear the open-faced sandwich? So, like, a meatloaf open-faced sandwich here? <laughs> like, okay, it's this is, a, this is a piece of toast with meatloaf on top of it. Like, that, that really is... That is true. Right. That's that's kind of stretching it. I will say. I mean, look, if you don't have to cut it, like, yeah, I'll take if it's a, a slice of meatloaf on top of a piece yeah. of bread, you can call it a sandwich if you can bite into it. Mm -hmm. But like, if you put a turkey on top of a piece of bread. <laughs> like, like, what some of those like meatball subs feel yeah. like, right? Like, I can't eat this. Yeah. Well, much respect for you. And Green Guard does say, um, hot dog is a sandwich. I had one in the sandwich show. As proof, I appreciate it, Jeffrey. <laughs> Can we give a shout to Green Guard music? It's our good friend, Jeffrey. Welcome in, my friend. Um, meatball, yeah, that's, but that's really incredible stuff. Um, yeah, I, I really, I, I'd love to see, it's, a, it's good that we have the scientific analysis of this situation just to give us a really good foundation as to, what constitutes a sandwich and what does not. So like that, that's really most appreciated. Um, let's see. Anything else in chat? Oh, I think I saw some. Oh, go on. Galara Dragon. If the two halves of the hot dog break apart while you're eating it, does it become a sandwich? The two halves is in the bread? Or yeah. In so the like the hot dog bun, if it became two parts. No, then you have an accident on your hand. <laughs> Right, because then you have because if you have like a good hot dog ride that has like ketchup, mustard, maybe some um, some cheese melted in, like you all have seen like the cut open, like a halfway cut open hot dog with some cheese melted in, yep. or some um, uh, I'm totally um, sauerkraut on top, like you know for a verse. If that splits the bun, your whole hot dog is destroyed because everything's going out. That's right, true. you just have a mess on your hands. It's just it's a sad accident. Well. I, I have a lot of respect for for your for your position here. Um, Organa says apparently we are not winning here. <laughs> <laughs> we've had so much debate on this over the last over the two years we've been on. It's really been wild. Um, I don't think there's the right answer. No, nah. I, I think you could argue all of the different facets of it. <clears throat> I completely agree, and I will. Uh, so one thing I'm going to just follow up with is our famous question, which is. Uh, breakfast question, which is um, waffles, pancakes, or French toast, or crepes? Okay. So, okay, Davey. Mm -hmm. You have to get a little international with me. In Hungary, mm -hmm. crepes are dessert. And so there's actually the, the Hungarian style that we always have, and it's always a dessert item. So when I was growing up, until college i didn't know that you could have crepes for breakfast or there was a thing called a savory crepe right because in hungary we'd fill it with um poppy seed or chocolate or um almond paste things like that it was always sweet so i'm i'm still like it, the I, even 15 years later the idea just feels foreign to me mm -hmm. of having a crepe for breakfast nothing wrong with it it's just i just i think i've done it once during an interview for a job and it, it was i was like this is just weird there's ham in here there's cheese 
<laughs> so I go on the French toast side of things. I love it. All right, mods, exclamation point, French toast. We will document your decision for our record what, keeping. What about you? Oh, I'm a pancakes guy. I like pancakes a lot. And the reason I like pancakes is because I feel like it's the most consistently produced of them. So you can waffles can be great. French toast can be great, but they can also be really mediocre if you're not if you're not doing it right. Pancakes you can do the the least wrong with. And I think you get more good pancakes from more places than you do from the other two. But it's really okay, so Oh, go ahead. You and you and I have gone to very different breakfast places. <laughs> <laughs> because the most destroyed the reason I didn't say pancake. Okay. Is because that has been the most destroyed thing. That I have had. Interesting. I, I, I agree with Belen. Yeah. This really? Like cardboard. Oh, man. Like you drench it in syrup and it's still like, it's chewy. It's, it's <laughs> I, I think French toast, on the other hand, is a lot like pizza. When it's good, it's, it's good. And when it's bad, it's still pretty good. Whereas yeah. on a pancake, you can, a pancake, I agree though, Davey, it's, it's the easiest one to keep consistent. But despite it being the easiest one to keep consistent, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so I are on the side of French toast, and I love savory French toast sandwiches. I actually had a deep fried French toast breakfast sandwich one time, and it does change things. It's pretty good. It's got to be special, but it's good stuff. So that was uh, in Hungary. We did. So I didn't ever had French toast until like you know growing up in like college and whatnot. Because in Hungary, what we do is minus one of those steps, you dunk the bread and egg, and then you fry that. And that's actually, it's not called French, right? In French toast in Hungary, the translation is um, coated bread, like a, like a coat. Yeah. Because of what you fry around it. And that's a that's something you have for breakfast. And you like sprinkle some cheese on top and that's what you have. And my grandmother, that's what she makes. And it's just the best. And then all of a sudden I see like sweet French. I'm like, what is this? And like the, the you know, the flour and, oh, and then, I love it. I love it now. But it's very, it's very <laughs> Sounds different. Sounds amazing. Very, very it really does. Well, Belen, thank you so much for answering that. Like, and I, I, I do think it's such an interesting take. Like, I, I, now I think we can both concede that there have been really bad waffles. Like, if you, you waffles can be just very dry. They can be very bland. They can be very tasteless. Have you had? Do you see that risk with waffles as well? Like, that waffles can be, can be bad. Like, worse than you know what I mean. Like, whereas. Like where Carlos said, French toast, even like bad French toast, is still pretty good. Would you say the same about waffles? For me, absolutely not. Yep, and in the, growing up in the, I don't know if Carlos seen this, but being in the South United States, you got Waffle House, right? Twenty four seven fast food breakfast place. Mm -hmm. You want bad waffles? That's <laughs> the same thing. It's that chewy, mm -hmm. cardboard like mm -hmm. consistency. And you know, the thickness and the fluffiness, there's a lot more factors that can be just like, yeah. I feel like, like Carlos said, it should be standard. You you take the dough, you pour it in, you, you're done. But it, it doesn't come across that way. Yeah. I completely agree. I actually agree. think, that, like, look at pasta, the same thing. Like, the simplest things to prepare are the things that are either really, ex it's rare that you have them as good as they should be. And it's, common to have them as bad as they can be but it should never be either one of those it should always be just this good and it's not but yeah um the creative star marius is the awful waffle waffle house is southern hibachi right you're right <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Is, they have they have the griddle and they're like working all you know yeah. and it's we took an eighth grade field trip to waffle house <laughs> okay the idea was that we measure the circumference of our waffle and calculate the area of the waffle and the rate, you know, it was, it was like, it was math class, but I remember the teacher ordered all this other food for herself. And we were stuck there. Like, she's like, all y'all can order is a waffle. And I was like, I really don't like the waffles here. And we were stuck ordering a waffle, did math on the waffle. They're like, all right, now you can eat it. I'm like, I really don't want this. Can I have eggs like you? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That'd be something. I never heard of a class like a field trip to Waffle House before. Just imagine an equivalent to that in other regions. Y'all, <laughs> Maria. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> the, <teacher> <laughs> the monkeys. <laughs> the teacher had the monkeys. <laughs> so good. That's probably right. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, somebody said to comment. Uh, okay, this is... Okay, so... Galara Dragon. I heat up a tortilla in the toaster oven and melt cheese down the middle. And then add the hot dog and condiments. I've had that before. Like the hot dog burrito. It can work. You just need the right kind of combinations in there. I, I'll tell you. The hot dog in non bread or in a in a um in a pita shell that's okay the doughiness of that mm -hmm. with that works okay yeah but like your typical street taco slash flat tortilla it's, there's something sad about that i don't know for a hot dog oh and, well, I see. Like well, the pita bread and hot dog i agree is because yeah. then you can stuff it with you can, if you mince the hot dog mm -hmm. or even just the circle pieces and you mix in some onion and some even chili mustard thing oh it isn't it's amazing yeah yeah, I, I think that, yeah, it would definitely would be better with a pita, though. I, I concur with that. Um, Green Guy says, Guapo House is great. None in Chicago. I always make a stop when traveling. It's a good once in a while place to go to. Yeah, I, I'm certainly good with that. Like, and it's cheap, too. I think that's the biggest thing about it. Like, it's pretty cheap. But, yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> to say right, going back to pancakes for a second, mm -hmm. the strangest thing for me, the best pancakes I've had in the least likely place. Denny's makes great pancakes consistently every time like they're them. always fluffy they're always they're they're spot on and i'm like how is the best pancake consistently found at one of the worst places you could ever end up on the road <laughs> and it's just yeah it's a thing though it's 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 they're great pancakes how would you compare them to ihop um i wouldn't i, I would put them both in the same boat and call them desperation breakfast <laughs> When you don't know where you're going and you only have so much bravery to last so far off the interstate, you go to what's familiar even if it sucks. That's why those places are in business. Real people, real locals, they go to special little nooky places that are shop and kitschy looking and shady spots of town because they're going to go and they're going to spend half the money for twice the breakfast and love it on the road. Yep. Yeah. I mean, nope. it's kind of in McDonald's. I actually agree with Scissorman. McDonald's hotcakes were not bad either. I'm not no, I, I totally agree. Absolutely. I've all, yeah. Same point, though, too. How do the best pancakes are found in the worst places to find a pancake? It doesn't make sense. McDonald's hash browns. Yeah, let's go. Top quality hash browns. Top tier. S mm -hmm. tier. Because, like, well there's done. so many words well wet, wet with oil. You can't eat it. But they, they get the ratio right. Yeah. It's an amazing. Yeah, you, you would think that's easy to do, but it's not. Like, I've been to so nah. many that just way too much oil. They fry too much. You know, they don't do it enough. It's amazing how they do that. It's so consistent. The, the thickness, right? The ratio yeah. of potato to the crust. Mm -hmm. I know this is we, only because somebody invoked McDonald's. I, I, I think McDonald's is bottom of the barrel fast food for me. And I just, it drives me nuts because we that's all we have in our town. As much as I want to love, they're just the most, the, the most least consistent place ever. And that doesn't make sense because that's the whole point, of, right? Of fast food is that you get it the same way every time as quickly as you can. And how do you, how do you not do that? But I have the same problem with a fish fillet there. They give you half a slice of cheese for a full fillet of fish on a steamed bun that doesn't fit the thing you're putting on it. And you get, I, I think the fair word would be a dollop, but you literally get an eye drop of tartar sauce on this fish or you get a waterfall of it, of every place off every corner of the sandwich. I don't understand. You don't understand. Where's Jern? <laughs> you know, it, seriously, it's, it is just, I don't understand it. McDonald's is not making sense. And yet, again, some of the best flurries. Yeah, right there. Crazy hard. Ice cream maker is always broken. The reason why it's always broken, because it's the only thing people ever order, because it's the only thing that can come out consistently awesome at McDonald's. So it's like, yeah. It's no, of course it's not fish. It's McDonald's. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah, no. Carl is fired up here. This is what this is incredible stuff. Hey, I'll, I'll say, Carlos, can I tell you a secret? Do you tell David, me. no one else here? I love the McRib. I really do. Wrong with that. It's now see the only reason now. Now okay. Now let's get science on this. Is the McRib really rib? Say no. 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 And it's okay to love it. If, no. As long as you can say that, it's okay to love it. No, I have no idea what it is. It's a leftover. <laughs> right. Leftovers. Of All right. So I, now I the next, we have I will not do another McDonald's collab is. with you, Belint, until well, okay, until the, when it comes back around. When it comes back around, we're on a hiatus until you put the McRib under a microscope. That's got to happen. That's got to happen. <laughs> That's got to happen. I do love the McRib, <laughs> and I tell you, it, it's like you said. I don't know what it's in it. I don't. I don't qualify it as necess as high quality food at any level. I love it. <laughs> Whenever it's out, 
Exactly. Grimbley, it tastes like a barbecue hot dog. Well, you're not wrong, and yet we love it. Yeah. Yep. I'm here for it. And it, you know what it is? And then there's these little accents. They have like the, the diced onions in the bottom, and then the pickles. It's like, it's the little things with that with that sandwich. Mm -hmm. So some love, some little onion on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just the right amount of wrong. <laughs> Boy, that isn't the truth. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. For Morgana Dreamfire, I have, or I'm sorry, Nota Silver Star, Hydrate Command. Or I should say Redeem. Thank you so much for the Redeem, uh, Nona. Um, yeah, so definitely feel free to, to um, throw in some liquid refreshment. Um, so we're going to close a queue. Um, but Lent, uh, I, I don't know how much t more time you would have with us, but uh, I have. I do want to just at this point say thank you so much for, for hanging with us. Um, if you want to hang for another couple minutes, that's cool. But if not, uh, we understand as well. Yeah, I can stay for another 15. Okay, 15. Before I got to take take the little one and be you know go be dad mode. Okay. <laughs> so for 15 minutes, we can probably take like two to three more questions, everybody. Would you like to throw them in? Exclamation point question followed by the question itself. Love to take it out. Um, take take up take up on that. Yeah, no, we don't. We don't, I don't think any of us really know. Court Goblin says, "I'm not sure if the McRib is pork." We we don't know what it is. We don't know if it's meat. We don't. We don't. It's, the, it's the it's the other other white meat. Yeah, that's anyone's guess, folks. So, um, let's see. Um, so yeah, we can throw any more questions. But according to McDonald's, McRibs are primarily made out of ground boneless pork. Children emulsified with water, spices, dextrose, sugar, and preservatives to refine its flavor and texture. Sure, you can call okay, it. So that, that according to McDonald's, that, that's, that's great. That's a typical corporate response. I'm going to use the same words that they use and describe the truth of it, though. You ready for this? Okay. According to McDonald's, McRibs are emulsified water, spices, dextrose, sugar, preservatives to refine the flavor and texture with 49% something, something boneless and porkish to account for the difference. That's it. Because yes, it might also be made up, also be made up of ground boneless pork shoulder, but let's not kid ourselves. It's 51% everything else. <laughs> Minimal. <laughs> All right. So scissor made a question for Carlo. Um, Carlo's going to Texas. What meal will he get first? Not Denny's and not IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> Carlo. So uh, we're going to be we're going to be flying into Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil Phil Luna is going to uh, be meeting us uh, the the day we fly in, uh, and uh, when we do, um, I'm sure he's going to be he's going to play tour guide for the first day we're there. Um, I do know that when we go down, we're going to be visiting. Uh, well, we're going to be going to Waco, but then either depending on where where we go first or last, we haven't lined that part up yet. But there's a place, uh, and and she just came in, Anchored Albatross and, and Ark. We're going to be visiting them. And they um, they said there's a place in their town they wanted us to go that was uh, that was special and uh, I don't remember what you said it was Alves but I, I heard what they had and I was I was I was game. I think the big question for me is like, will brisket and I think you may have answered this already, but will brisket and and uh, was it brisket and ribs enter the conversation somewhere in there? Because it sounds like that's the prime spot for beef ribs and brisket actually. You know, so beef ribs, I can imagine too. So Texas style beef ribs yeah. are, are a thing up here too. And um, now, now having said that, I don't know. I can't say obviously with any certainty, but I will stream our experience at, at Texas restaurants nice. while we're on the road. I will totally do that. Um, and one of the things that um, that uh, has proven true nearly a hundred percent of the times is that the things that you go to a place for, like what's known for it usually end up not being the best uh like i you would buffalo wings i'm not a fan of buffalo wings in buffalo from buffalo buffalo pizza is absolutely amazing which you don't hear about i don't understand that uh so like likewise i've heard that you know down south is where you get the best barbecue that may have been true when it started because it was the only place i think you'll find the best barbecue is actually in the homes of people who live in the south not necessarily the restaurants you'll find in the south um I think you we we have a place uh, here um, that uh, Ruby Soul Food, and mm -hmm. she literally, it's not even a food truck; it's the trunk of her car. All right, that's as you don't get as 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 shady, sketch, and ghetto as this. And I'm telling you, I will hand I will take the Pepsi challenge any day of the week that Ruby Soul Food 
on Salina Street in Podunk, Syracuse, upstate New York is better than anything I could find in the state of Louisiana. I'm, I'll take that. I'll die on that hill. Well, um, Carlos, so it's, it, you know, <laughs> it's it's it sounds amazing. I, I mean, you definitely would have the, the palate to, to have that com to have that uh, opinion for sure. And so <laughs> I, I appreciate. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a great setup. for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Maria says, I now, agree as a Georgian. In agreed. defense of that, I'll give you two guesses of where Ruby's from. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, nice. so it's one of those things where, you know, she brought, you she brought, she brought it up from Louisiana. So you can't, I can't say that. And, 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 oh, you know, okay. 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 But, Even but better. again, is it to be found there? Yeah. I don't know. I think she does. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. I, I, I think that's, I think that's well said. Um, so, but Lent, since you mentioned your upbringing in Macon, Georgia, the natural question for me is, are you familiar with varsity fries at all? And what's your take on them? <laughs> Is this the restaurant in Atlanta? The yeah, varsity? yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's garbage. It's absolute garbage. <laughs> it is the most overhyped. I do not understand. Where is Jern to tell me? I I don't get it. It is some weird burger place that has tiny slider portions. And it is just it's just not good. It's it's overpriced and just terrible. Like I can go to five guys and get something twice as good. Uh special shout out to our friend uh, the creative star, because I our friend Maria ha also had opinions on Varsity Fries, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate that. I, it's good to know, actually. So the next time I'm in the area, I'll just remember to skip them. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, no, you will die. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you speak from a place of experience on that, Maria? I believe she does. <laughs> I believe there was very much experience in that area. Oh, they do so give you hats when you go. Like little, like paper hats. Ah. And I guess that's the fun part of going. <laughs> paper hats. <laughs> it was so bad, says Maria. Wow, wow. So it sounds like you're you're not alone in that experience, Maria. So that's that might be in a way comforting um, to know that. In in, in a, my, <clears throat> but yeah, y'all saved me a lot of con a lot of grief. Thank you so much for your opinion on that, Belint. I appreciate you for that. <laughs> If there is a signature food from where you grew up, like what would it be? In addition to obvious choices like peach cobbler, I'm sure that's a low hanging fruit choice. But what else? What else kind of do you remember from that area? So we didn't really go out much. So mm -hmm. when out when we moved to the U.S., um, my mom was a re resident at medical school, mm -hmm. and so we didn't have really the money to be going out so it was homemade hungarian food like i remember we would go to the grocery store she and my grandpa would go to the discount meat section and my grandpa would poke a little hole in the sarin wrap of the meat and smell it to see if it had gone bad and that's what they would be buying so we i there's no real food memory i gotcha of making because we just would eat at home like the peaches yeah but like you said that's low hanging fruit and nowadays I have memory of like one pizza place, but that was like when started when I was in college. Mm -hmm. So not nothing really like from that area. There was on, on a, one school trip for Latin club. We went to, there was a roadside barbecue place. It's the side of the highway, little shack that had the breast Brunswick stew and the best pulled pork. But that was like, it's a, it was like a once in a year kind of thing that would be like on a school trip. Ooh. It sounds great though, it does. Oh, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love it. Um, all right, last call for questions, anyone? Last call for questions. Let's see. Recording Goblin says that paper hat you mentioned earlier from uh, Varsity, for, from Varsity, kind of like the crown from Burger King, except but Maria says but worse. It literally looks like a boat on your head. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, Creative Store's got it. <laughs> they know 100 percent what it was how, how about you davy what's native to your location well i mean the the big and low-hanging fruit the low-hanging fruit of low-hanging fruit is in and out right and uh it's very good uh, i mean yeah i've it's, never i've not partaken it's one of the things you know what i think is going to happen knowing you as well as i do you're going to go down there you're going to be like yeah it was good was it worth all the hype Probably not. And I See, feel the, the problem with it, though, and that, that's that is the problem with trying a place that's a franchise place while you're on the road on a trip. Yeah. You judge the place on it. Dude, if I judged any place I've ever been on a one off, you, you're going to get disappointed because 
A, the hype in your head is competing towards the reality that you're going to lose that every time. Yeah. But then even if it's good, you won't know because you only had it the one time. I'm sorry. Some of the best places I've had have had bad days. Why would I, you know, see, that's the problem with that. Well, I went to an in and out once and it went, yeah, well, that's the mistake. You only went once. You got to go yeah. more than once and you got to order different things. You can't just go and get the cliche. Um, so it's, so let yeah. me, let me expound on that because everybody knows in and out. Everybody nationwide knows in and out. The one that everybody does not know is Tommy's. Now, Tommy's is doesn't get more L.A. than Tommy's. That is the mm -hmm. sloppiest, greasiest chili burger you've ever had. And when you're in the mood for it, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. You have the giant tomato slice and the pickles and the spicy peppers that you can add to it and the diced onions, the mustard. And they didn't even uh, serve. I want some art. Do you have a photo of this? Oh, absolutely. Let me uh, pull one up here. Tommy's original Tommy's. Yeah, see, there's like other ones that are named Tommy's. This is like the famous Ray's debacle in the, the early 90s, but you know, but uh, famous Ray's in New York, just to be clear, just so I don't get anybody confused there. But um, okay, so here are a few pictures. I'm gonna go get a screen cap over here. Um, I'm gonna try to get, I think, there's Blunt. There we go. Oh, I got you in here. So, really quickly, I'm gonna show you what Tommy's hamburgers look like here. So this is just the the, pro, the photo they come up with. But let me give you an actual one. There you go. I mean, this. That is comfort food. Oh man. Food. Yes. Then yeah. you That's got a garbage plate on two slices of bread. That's fabulous. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Absolutely. And you can see that you see the chili fries on the left hand side. Like this is, this is where it's at. Like if it's late at night and you just want, you just want, you just want to feel good. This mm -hmm. is where it's at. That's West Coast comfort food right there. Yeah. Big time. Like, it's so identifiably L.A. Like, it's just, and it's been around forever, forever, forever. Almost 100 wow. years now. Like, it's like, uh, they're probably going to celebrate wow. its 80th and 78th or so anniversary this year. <laughs> yeah. Scissorman. Scissorman's a point Yeah. <laughs> so that's mine. I feel like if you, if you want a food that's like, this is an L.A. food. This is an L.A. food. This is as L.A. as it gets. To me at so least. we're going to Tommy's when I come out there. That's what well, I'm that and tacos, like any tacos, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. Tacos, it, we are the epicenter of tacos, in, at least in the U.S. that we are. So I would say there are a lot of different places you can get tacos. I don't want to cite any specific one because I feel like that's there's so many of them. It's just like go anywhere. <laughs> tacos are great everywhere. So, um, okay. So what's yours, Carlo? Like what's your identifiably CNY food? Um, so Syracuse is known primarily for salt because mm -hmm. we had a salt mine. So salt was a major export for Syracuse, Salina yep. Street being the major street in our area. Um, and so salt potatoes were a thing here. There were mm -hmm. like baby, baby sized potatoes, uh, with, with, and it sounds so simple and it is, and I don't understand why it's a thing, but it's a thing. So, um, they're, they're very, they tend to be very soft, very small, uh, they tend to be overly salted. I don't like them that much, but also melted butter. And that you, it's not uncommon to see people walking around in a state in our state fair with just a uh, a paper box full of so full of baby salt potatoes. And uh, they go, they get paired with everything from hot dogs and burgers to pizza to everything. It's for some reason it just it's the eternal side dish here. Um, I will say beyond that, what I think should get more attention here is Utica greens. Uh, Utica greens here are. Um, Usually you either get bacon or pancetta or prosciutto. The better place to use prosciutto. Uh, and it's escarole, uh, olive oil, garlic, Romano cheese. And it's, it's uh, every place makes them different. Some do it with cherry peppers. Some do it with seafood. I've seen them with baby scallops in them. Uh, it's an Italian restaurant dish. Uh, every place, every Italian restaurant has it. Most of them don't do it in a way that makes me want to order it more than once. Uh, a couple places ironically not italian restaurants do it very well and it's consistent and uh, those places um they bake it and they put it with breadcrumbs on it and it turns out to be like this side dish that's like a casserole it's really fantastic so anybody who uh who comes up here at utica greens if you if you do like a uh, a wannabe vegetarian dish that shouldn't ever be recommended to a vegetarian that would be the one because they usually put prosciutto and whatnot in it Hey, oh my! Pine, Look at this. We got a rate from Half Pine Carry. Half Pine Carry, welcome in. It's good to see you again. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Protector Riot. 
I predict it right. Half pie carry. So good to see you. How's it going, everybody? How is your stream? So nice to see you again. My name is Davey. I'm a variety streamer out of Los Angeles, and we've been talking about food for the last 30 minutes with our good friends, um, the stream scribe, and our guest tonight, Cyan Streams, who we all know as Belent. Um, it's great to see you all, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the raid. Uh, everybody here in our chat, feel free to follow our our incredible singing friend, Half Pint Carry. A really fun stream over there at Half Pint Carry. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're down to two questions. So, Belent, I'm going to give this one for you first. This is kind of, this is always a, this is a classic question for all three. If you could meet one person, dead or alive, this is from Morgana Dreamfire, who would it be and why? So unfortunately, he's dead. Oh. He died last year. Edward O. Wilson is who I would meet. He is a scientist who started in middle of nowhere, Alabama, in the forties, as a or thirties even as a kid, and he ended up being a professor at Harvard Medical School. And he studied. He was a naturalist. He studied things in the world because he thought they were interesting. There was no funding like angle to it. How can we apply this to humans? He was studying things because they were interesting. And that was his motive for wanting to study something. He wrote an absurd number of books. I would highly suggest to check them out. They're all Pulitzer Prize winners, science-based books, but also they read as a story. So he's one of my inspirations for how to write a scientific paper because it tells a story, not just a series of facts. And he has a very influential book that I would suggest anyone who's interested in the natural world should read. It's called Letters to a Young Scientist. And it is kind of framing a good way to think about and how to be a scientist, meaning to be curious, ask questions, and then also be a public servant. And so I would have loved to sat down and pick his brain. He also worked with ants. He's the oh, wow. grandfather of ant research. Um, him and... Um, E uh H O Hall Ho Dobler, uh German gentleman, that they you will see a lot of their co publish a lot during their heyday. And he was uh he was still giving E. O. Wilson was still giving tours last year and he came out with his last book last year, uh, before he passed. But it was that man hands down, I'd love to pick his brain. That is so wow. That's a great I love that. I love that. Now Maria says, Ant Man <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right, Carlo, uh, who would you like to meet? If there's one person you could meet, dead you or alive. You know, I ask that question all the time, and I shouldn't say that. I get to ask, I've been asked that question often, and I don't think I've ever given the same answer twice. I think I just find too many things interesting. I don't think I can pick one. But recently, um, I mean, the most recent, I would say, my wife and I, like I said, we are the most we deep dive is on Wikipedia, looking up, you know, the histories of people who we see on television or in, or in shows and um I would like to have met, and this is going to spark some uh, uh, interesting facial expression from Belen. You might want to pan over to his screen so they can see it. Um, I would like to have met um, Lynn Manuel uh, before Hamilton blew up. Um, just, I would love to have been a fly on the wall in his development process of what he thought and what he did and how he scrutinized his play. Um, I, I, I find his. Uh, I, again, the before part, um, and I think that's crucial because I feel like you can't possibly achieve that success and have it not change you. I don't think you can. But to find him having, having been a starving artist and developing something that became so huge, I would have loved to have been, you know, in the diner in the booth behind him, listening to talk to his friends about his ideas, kind of thing. You know, just like when there was still doubt as to what form it would take on. Um, I almost, and if I had to be a little bit less trendy about it, I would probably say, well, it's probably not less trendy. I would love to have the same experience with Tolkien, uh, when the ideas for what became so huge were still in formation. Uh, you see people who like, um, who, who love Lord of the Rings or anything to do with it. Um, and notice I did not say George Lucas about the same point. We're going to leave that out of the, out of the, out of the discussion. But, um, by the way, shameless plug for George Lucas and love, if you want to laugh. Um, the, um, but Tolkien, though, uh, how the same man who can write, invent several languages with such rich histories and everything can also still name key places in the in the in the world scene, Mount Doom. <laughs> how how you can have 
how <laughs> you can have such you know it's, it's just a contrast i just i gotta know i gotta know how what made you go there after developing this you know that's mm-hmm. like i don't know it just, i loved it ever since i read that meme the first time <laughs> yeah it's, it's a thing it's it's hilarious but no there's uh you, I, everybody it's it's become so common now that people have a little bit of an idea about token uh, there's obviously a movie made about him which i have not seen i, I can't imagine it being that good even if it is I'll, I'm, I'm still not gonna see it yet but reading what i can from his backstories you know obviously being in a war and having a very big fondness for earth and and the tying into the thing the thing about the elves and the treants and the hobbits and how he managed to create an entire mountain mcmountain <laughs> <laughs> nice. i love you <laughs> um but but yeah so it's it i would have loved to have been a fly in the wall and in, in the development process and hearing him you know if, if you just heard you know what what was it that connected those dots other than what we've heard in, in reports and what if you ever do look into you know the kind of life that he led um you know he was very much a hobbit in real life wow uh, and which, you know, it's so a true story. Like <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, lo- he loved his pipe. He loved his food. He loved his his songs. And that was it. And he was very much uh, everything opposite he was exposed to in his youth, at least from what you can tell from reports. I just think that um, finding out how a man invents that big of, a, of, a, of anything from what seems like a very small existence, I think that's said a lot. And I feel like the same thing's manifested in, in Lin-Manuel. Pretty neat. Like I, I really, I really like your choices. Like it's, these are really good. How fun, Carrie! Thank you for the thirteen month resub with Prime. Pump it up! I love it. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate your continued support of the Sandwich Show. Um, now they did. I was asked this. I've been asked to ask the question, answer the question too. So as of you all are giving some great responses, I was thinking a couple myself. I just, I do. This doesn't really count as my answer, but I want to meet Abraham Lincoln just to know what his voice actually sounded like, because I, <laughs> I have no idea. I don't think it's what people have said you have used in like narrate you know like documentaries or whatever. Um, so other than that, I'm gonna say Freddie Mercury because like I just think he's such a brilliant mind. Like yeah, what he did with Queen, and uh, it's just I would love to see the thought. I mean, I'm sure he's done interviews and things to to kind of give us a little bit of that, but I'd love to just hang out. He seemed like he'd be really fun to talk to, and so that would be mine. Yeah, right on. Um, we're down to one question. I'll just make this quick because I know we I know we're, we're running short in time. But from Peppercorn Lace, think and uh, the question is another food question: fries or onion rings? Fries versus onion rings. Belent. No fries and onion rings. Done. <laughs> I mean, Carl has got the best answer. But if that I have great. to choose, usually my moods for fries, because onion, onion rings, right? It's a different texture. It's a different yeah. flavor. It might pair differently with what you have. Versus, I feel like fries are universal. Agreed. A complete. That's the biggest thing for me. Like fries will go with more things, but anyways, don't always go with everything. Like I think, I think I like that answer a lot. So that's gonna do it for us, everybody. Thank you so much. We're gonna have the mother of all credits tonight. So let me just run those really quickly. <laughs> so give me just a second to get that ready. But but Lent, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Like it honestly means so much that you'd be you take time to. I know you're very busy and everything, so it really means a lot for you to to, to, to hang with us and you know um. I feel I come back anytime. I I just that's all I wanted to say at the moment. But uh, we'll run the credits really quickly. David just stated the understatement of the century. Berlin is so freaking busy; it's not even funny. This whole thing took two months to put together. This is so. True. Just let's put that in there. In, like, in, in my defense, I had a child. Yeah, I, <laughs> that small technicality, sir. Small <laughs> technicality. I love it. So let's run these credits. All right. So rolling the credits. I'm going to try to get Belint on screen here while we do this. Uh, thank you for having me on, Davey. And subscribe. Thank you for being Love your face, sir. Hanging You're, out with us. It's really nice of you to be with us, uh, uh, Belint. Hold on. Let me see if I can get you in here so I, you can run. Look at all these. Put look. him up there. You can take me down. Put him up there. I, I'm, no, the I'm, more handsome one should be on. Leave, leave Carla on here. They already know I'm handsome. Now they got to see you. No, they don't want to see that. That's, that's when the viewer ratings drop. <laughs> I excuse you. It's the hair. The hair. The hair. <laughs> Yeah, I hair will needs back to walk. Challenge. Your hair wins over this hot mess any day, sir. You're done. You're done. No, no, no. That hat. The hat plays. The hat does play. That the hat's my only redeeming quality. Oh no, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> look at this. I, look at the look at the, the the subs. This my computer is like about to freeze because of all the subs. Look at this. Thank you so uh-huh. much. I've never. This is a Marvel the, movie the credit roll. Like this again. is yes. I've never seen so many gifted subs in my life. 
Oh we my... need to get we need to make a credit scene for all the subs that are in channels that high tech has brought in. <laughs> and, and he needs to be like the ship in space balls, it just keeps going. Like it just needs <laughs> yes, we need to do that. Right, right. It just goes for like five minutes. <laughs> Thank like, you. The list of high tech subs are like the li the list of Elvis's illegitimate children. It's just like just keep I, going, you know, just I will tell you. <laughs> I had no Elvis <laughs> did you say Matched only by Will Chamberlain's illegitimate children, of course. But you know, <laughs> I love it. Was the pause that stole me, sir? <laughs> I was going for that. I was going for that. <laughs> oh my god! That one's like, yeah, I got kids yeah. too. Right there. Yeah, that one right on cue. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, oh my goodness! You weren't wagging enough, baby. i uh, been Gordon Goblin. Thank you for the ten gifted subs. My goodness. And thank you, Peppercorn. I, I, I just, I, I, I love life in in these moments. Me too. Oh my gosh! Thanks. By everybody. the way, we haven't said that enough. I know you're trying to wrap up here, but Peppercorn, thank you for saying that. Davey, you have. We talked about uh, voices. Somebody mentioned the Blint's voice for radio. People talk about my voice all the time. Sir, you have the best mid of the road interviewer <laughs> voice thank ever. You. You, no one you interview is going to have a voice like yours, and your laugh is infectious. And, and it is. And it's. It just is. It just is. I, I I love you to death. I'm so glad you do what you're doing here. I just, it's, it's just awesome. We've I talked about this many times, but seriously, I, I don't know if we, we we all feel the same way about what we bring to the table. I don't I don't take myself too seriously with what I do. Belint he wants to focus on the science, not his research of it. And Davey, you're 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 too damn humble, sir. I I, I think you're genius. Whether you mean to be or not, fine. We can debate that to the end of the days. But it it is nonetheless what it is. We well, love you for it. Well, uh, I couldn't do it without you. You know, I, you know, a lot of people say that in their various you know, media productions, or streams, radio shows, whatever. But it legitimately is true. Like this show would not be very good <laughs> if you all weren't here to be part of it. So thank you, uh, Carla. Thank Belen. This is really again. Thank you again for your time. Um, all the best to your you and yours as uh, you continue the journey. And, and your partner celebration on Saturday is going to be sounds going to be amazing. I can't wait to see it. Um, anything else we should know before we before we, we say goodbye tonight? Uh, thank you for having me on. Like you said, uh, we're having our partner party on saturday and then we start the ambassador push let's go the man is not, i'm the man in is not sleep. <laughs> aim high man my friends i i there's no reason to stop now my uh Belinda, i love it um i uh, sorry for the video issues over on the, on the on the stream side everybody i think it's just my feed but but y'all but y'all i think it's the gifted subs it, it's starting to break the obs but hashtag blame the sub good hashtag good blame. problem to have though i'm not going to i'm not complaining um <laughs> so Belinda, is there anywhere you'd like to raid tonight like we could we can pass on the love from our from our combined communities well what are you feeling i mean it's, it's yeah i don't want to take over your stream my friend i feel like okay. you should be the one in charge I have an idea, but first let me just thank some folks for the community challenge points. So PJME and uh, Rahomo, and I think there are a couple of others. The Creative Star. I want to make sure I get everybody here because they're. they're um, I think uh, Scissorman Fifty One. Thank you so much for your points for the community for the uh, community challenge. Fantastic. You're on, Tony. Well done. Okay, so Carlo, um, shall we go somewhere to someone that you are familiar that you, that essentially brought you to the platform based on what we were talking about earlier the person is streaming at the moment ah well i mean that that's definitely a thing i uh, i won't say no to that at the same time i don't know uh i don't know if their content's what you want to bring them to it's uh they're they're an art stream um okay i don't know your call entirely yeah this is uh this is an interesting one let me go refresh everything though just make sure everybody's on point um I, this is actually wasn't really. I should have thought a little bit more about this, but um, but, but I, I, do, I do the same thing all the time. Yeah. How? What is your thought? Pro what's your process when you try to raid bullet? Like, do you think? Do you always have an idea in mind when when you make the when you make the call? And you know that the gif of the guy. I think it's always sunny that he's pointing at the wall and everything's like tied together. Yeah. <laughs> and like he looks. It's it's there is a giant web in my head and i cannot i cannot explain it oh i hear you i hear you <laughs> yeah okay 
Yeah, this is a tough call. I'm having it. I'm actually. It is a tough call. What are what are what are some of your choices? In fact, one of the things I started doing recently because I didn't want to have to be responsible for it is <laughs> I would have people key in the first letter of the category they were looking for to narrow it down. So I would do G for game, A for art, M for music, and like just stuff like that. And so I get the first first thing in the chat that gets to three is what we rate out to, and I pick one of each to do that with. Okay, so, so I'm gonna have it down. To, so let's just make it. I'm gonna give you. I actually do kind of a similar thing with the with the Sam fam. So. We can go squirrel or we can go art. Which one do you want to do? And by squirrel, do we mean squirrel? Not literally squirrel, but someone who okay. identifies as squirrel. I noticed a literal squirrel in my list. I wasn't sure. You have a literal squirrel, squirrel in your list? What's what's the literal squirrel in your list? Let's see. Uh, he's a good dude, and he's a music person. So Grand Squirrel Master. That, uh, wait, that's actually the same guy. I was actually seeing the same thing. Okay. There you go. We, our decision <laughs> is made. We're going to we're going to Grand Squirrel Master, folks. I love right it. On. Okay, folks. So, uh, mods, can we get get in? first of all, chat? Get mod love in the chat. Amazing stuff by the mods. I thank you so much, um, everybody. Maria, um, Rahomo, and any and King. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Door number three, Stuart Hayek. Uh, but like again, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night, and uh, you know, continued success on your on your stream. I really appreciate your time. Thank and, you for having me on. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and start the raid now. So, um, mods, can we get the raid calls in the chat while my computer? <laughs> my computer tries to make sense of all the excitement tonight um tina is lurking too oh tina nice uh, tina have a great uh, tina thank you so much for hanging out with us too tina tina french is awesome so copy the raid yes, calls yes. copy the raid calls we're gonna go see grand squirrel master burr, 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 let's go yeah that guy's that, that guy's good he's good he really is all right we're doing it grand squirrel master starting the raid now folks Thank you again. Take care, everyone. We'll see you around. All the best. Uh, we're going to start the raid. Goodbye, everyone. Copy the raid calls. Go follow Grand Squirrel Master when we get there. Bye, y'all. We'll see you next time. Thank you again, everybody, for, for being part of this. We'll see you um, We'll see you next week with even more content. I'll, I'll tell you more about it all over in Discord. So, y'all, take care of yourselves. Be, be well. And we'll see you at Grand Squirrel Master. Bye, everyone. All the best. All of the best. Cheers, my friends. Okay, the rate should be on. Um, but thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Um, oh, let me stop this. That was one. awesome.